Today, live from Tarlington International Raceway in South Carolina, the Trans South 500 Winston Cup race. The rains that plagued yesterday's Bush Grand National event have moved out. We have bright sunshine on this Sunday afternoon as we get set for 500 miles of racing here at Darlington. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Bob Jenkins, and welcome to this historic facility. NASCAR's oldest super speedway built back in 1950. Fans come here from all over the nation to see this track. About 20 yards to my left is Highway 151, and about 20 yards to my right is the Joe Weatherly Stock Car Hall of Fame. And then just beyond that, the racetrack itself. Ask any driver, and they'll tell you that to add a win to Darlington, their resume means a great deal. Let's get more on this historic facility as we go inside the gates. Turn number two. Here's Dr. Jerry Punch. Well, Bob, there's a certain mystique here, a presence, if you will, that you can feel, if not see, when you enter this historic facility. Now, this track, too tough to tame, earned its reputation over the years from its unique configuration. It wasn't planned that way 41 years ago when Harold Bradington decided to build a racetrack here in South Carolina. In fact, it happened quite by accident. And we'll show you what happened. Now, off to my right, about 200 yards, is Jack Ramsey's fish pond. That fish pond over there, which still has the no trespassing signs bordered around its perimeter, is the reason they had to pay for the racetrack here. This racetrack would have been a perfect oval, but instead, Jack Ramsey said, hey, that's my favorite fish pond. I don't want any racetrack on my fish pond, so you guys better make it short up at this end. So now here in turns one and two on the east end of the racetrack, it is tapered. It is egg-shaped. This is turns one and two here, very pointed, whereas turns three and four, the perfect oval, much more blunted. 23 degrees of banking here, 25 degrees of banking here. It is this unusual configuration that's made this track too tough to tame. And over the years, the drivers have had to maintain a lot of concentration here. This little egg-shaped oval has brought a lot of people in contact with the guardrail and with the wall. But if you lose concentration just for one moment, whoops. Well, it looks like you could end up in a million pieces. Hey, guys, how do you like them? Scrambled or over easy? Jerry, I'm not sure the easy part works anywhere on this racetrack. It is one of the toughest circuits they run on. Benny Parsons and I are standing back in the middle of the field where the cars are lined up 15th through 20th where there are some pretty heavy hitters. Pretty heavy hitters. Eight of the last nine Trans-South 500 winners are qualified between 15th and 20th. And this race, folks, has never been won qualifying farther back than 10th. He's talking about over easy or scramble. I think scramble is the word as far as qualifying goes. I don't think there's any question about it. You can see these fellows scrambling up through the field. Dale Earnhardt has had a hot hand this year. He's leading the Winston Cup point standings. He won at Atlanta a few weeks ago. But there's another fellow who has also had a good year up to this point, and a fellow who is in a new ride that's up front with Dr. Dick Bergren, the editor of Stock Car Racing Magazine. As the middle of the pack has some hot shots, the series' newest rising star, Ernie Irvin, has followed up his strong third-place run at Atlanta with a third-place qualifying effort here, his best ever. Yet all eyes are on the pole. In a record-breaking run, Jeff Bodine has put Junior Johnson's Ford in the top spot. Bodine has had a great season so far. He's been in contention to win three out of the four races at the end. He was fast enough to win the fourth. You're the only guy that's led all four races. You're the guy they're going to chase today. The only thing you haven't done is win. Is today the day? Well, we hope so, but we're really proud for Junior Johnson to win this pole for Budweiser Ford. The whole team, it's a relief to get this Bush Bowl away this early in the season, but, you know, now our main goal is to win this race, and we're going to try to do that. I'd like to say to hi to all the race fans out here in America. Kathy, Matt, and Barry, I love you. This guy's got a tough road to hoe. He's won here three times at Bush Grand National, never in Winston Cup. Bob Jenkins? And it's the first poll for Junior Johnson on a super speedway since June of 1987 at Pocono, and the first at Darlington since 1972 when Bobby Allison took the poll for the Southern 500. It's time. Let's go to the start-finish line. And now, ladies and gentlemen, to give the command for the most famous words in auto racing, here's the Grand Marshal for the Trans South 500, Ronnie McDowell. Hit a run. Start your engine! Cars and drivers fire to life, getting set to go for 500 miles here at the track too tough to tame. 
Darlington International Raceway under bright, beautiful, sunshiny skies on this Sunday afternoon. Stand by. We've got an exciting afternoon of racing coming up for you here at Darlington, South Carolina. To think of this as a regional or a southeastern series, but look at this. Those are the drivers in the states represented in the top 15 starting positions, only two of them from North Carolina, and you can see the other states represented here at Darlington. Now, here's the starting lineup for today's race. On the pole, at 162.996 miles an hour, the Budweiser Ford from Shimong, New York, is Jeff Bodine, number 11. Outside of the front row will be Mark Martin from Batesville, Arkansas, and the Folgers Ford, 162.399. In the second row, Ernie Urban, his second time in the Kodak Film Oldsmobile, he qualified at 161.445. And on the outside of the second row, the Quaker State Buick, number 26, driven by Brett Bodine from Shimong, New York. Going to row number three now, it's Sterling Marlin in the Sunoco Oldsmobile car, number 94. He's from Columbia, Tennessee. And outside will be Ken Schrader from Fenton, Missouri in the Kodiak Chevrolet car, number 25. In seventh position will be Greg Sachs in the number 46 car, the City Chevrolet, and uh, you'll recognize this as one of the Days of Thunder cars, but they're not in this race to do anything for the movie. They're in the uh, race to race. Kyle Petty will start number 42 outside of the fourth row. Michael Waltrip starts inside row number five, and then Ricky Rudd in car number five. Going to row number six, it's Rusty Wallace in 27 and Rob Moroso in number 20. The seventh row consists of Davey Allison in 28 and Alan Kowicki in number seven. The eighth row has Dale Earnhardt in number three, who won the Southern 500 last year. Darrell Waltrip in number 17. The ninth row, Bill Elliott, car number nine, and Neil Bonnet in number 21. In row number 10 will be Morgan Shepard, who finished second at Atlanta a couple of weekends ago, in number 15, and Harry Gant in number 13. Harry's the defending champion of this race. The 11th row is Dick Trickle in number 66, and Bobby Hillen in number eight. Rick Mast in number two, and Daytona 500 winner Terry Cope in number 10 make up row number 12. In the 13th row is Richard Petty in number 43, and Wick Rick Wilson in 75. In the 14th row, it's Hut Strickland in 51, and Terry Labonte in number one. Hut Strickland, another one of those days of thunder cards. Jack Pennington in 47, and Buddy Baker in number 90 there in row number 15. The 16th row has Butch Miller in 98, and Chad Little in number 19. Row 17, it's Jimmy Spencer in 57, and Dave Marcus in 71. Going on to row number 18 now, it's number 12, Mike Alexander, and 01, Mickey Gibbs. The 19th row, J.D. McDuffie in number 70, and Jimmy Means in number 52. And in row number 20 will be Dick Johnson in number 38, the Australian, and H.B. Bailey in car number 36. Those that missed the field, Mark Stahl, Mike Potter, and Norm Benning. Those three cars could not make the starting lineup. Now... Let's take a look at the track too tough to tame. It's 1.366 miles in length. The pole lap time was 30.170 seconds, and the speed was 162.996. The banking between 22 and 25 degrees will go 367 laps this afternoon, and they'll be able to go 70 to 75 laps before they have to come in for a fuel stop. Our in-car cameras this afternoon are uh, with uh, Dick Trickle, the Phillips 66 race cam. This team, of course, owned by Cale Yarborough, who lives just down the road in Timmonsville, South Carolina. And there is our face cam that will show us the pictures of Dick as he tries to win this race. Harry Gant will also carry one of our in-car cameras. And it is mounted on his helmet. Our in-car camera is actually an on-person camera, so what he's going to be seeing, you will see as the afternoon goes along. And Bobby has a good view there right now, but as that windshield gets pitted later on in the afternoon, it won't be quite that clear. You can notice how he uh, kind of leans to one side as he goes through that banking. And only Harry again has a neck strong enough to run our little camera. He doesn't even use a neck strap. That camera only weighs two ounces, by the way, so it's really not noticeable at all. Mounted on the side of Harry Gant's helmet. That should make some real good pictures this afternoon. And our other in-car camera is being carried by what I think you could term a sensation in Winston Cup racing. He took that uh, number four car to the front of the field at Atlanta a couple of weekends ago and finished in third position and is looking for an equally good uh, finishing here this afternoon. That wave behind him that he waved he gave just a moment ago, that was to tell Sterling Marlin, who's starting behind him, good luck. 
and don't hit me in the first one. <laughs> there you can see Ernie Irvin as he gets set to go, coming up through the gears. A full field and a full house of people as the field comes off of corner number four and the green flag waves. Here we go in the Grand South 500. on the side of his helmet. Harry running in the middle of the pack. The leader is Jeff Bodine after one and a half laps. That's unbelievable. Look how his head is bobbing around in the corner. It looks like it's on a roller coaster or something. And imagine he's going to be doing that for about three and a half hours if the car holds together. That is an amazing shot. I never knew my head moved like that when <laughs> I was in a race car. No wonder your neck was sore at the end exactly. of the race. Exactly. Now we'll go inside Dick Trickle's car, and you can see how much steadier it is. This camera is mounted in the car itself, not on the helmet of Harry Gant. Of course, he's running right behind Harry Gant on the racetrack. And looking back from the bumper cam on Harry Gant's car to Dick Trickle's. Number two, Rick Mast in the white car that is looking inside of Dick Trickle, thinking about trying a pass, but not doing so yet. Now Trickle sneaking right up on the back bumper of Harry Gant. Trickle blew an engine in his qualifying run here. In fact, he had to shut it off before he got to the start-finish line. Still qualified 21st, but he thought that he had a chance at a record, and maybe even the pole had the engine not blown on him. Lee continues to be held by Jeff Bodine. In second position is Ernie Irvin and a car slow down in the apron of the racetrack between turns three and four. The yellow is out. Looks like Butch Miller in number 98 is going to be headed for Pitt Road. Well, he stays out on the racetrack. But the caution flag is out, so he's, his job is now catch up with the field and then make a pit stop because once that car spins, he's put flat, stop up, flat spots on those radial tires. He needs to go in and get four new ones. Here comes the field down off of the fourth corner to receive the yellow flag. There is Bodine and Urban taking the yellow flag on lap number five. You think anyone will pit this early, Ned? I don't think we'll see many of them unless they have major problems. They don't want to, especially those in the front half of the field, they do not want to give up their track position. We have a halfway challenge here this afternoon. The winner of the race at the halfway point, 100. Top 10 now as we are under caution for the first time this afternoon in the Trans South 500. We'll be right back. Took the green, now going into turn number three. That is Jeff Bodine stretching out the advantage a little bit over the second place car of Ernie Irvin, running back in third and fourth position to number six car of Mark Martin and the 26 of Brett Bodine. In comes Ken Schrader at number 25 and Sterling Marlin at 94. Everyone pretty well content at the moment, Bob, to run in single file. Of course, uh, you have to run in single file most of the time here at Darlington, but sometimes when you're ready to mount a charge, you pick your place on the racetrack that you think that you can make a pass. You can see the advantage that Jeff Bodine has opened up already, putting several car lengths between himself and Ernie Irvin and the rest of the field. Now Ken Schrader at number 25, looking to the inside of Brett Bodine. That's quite impressive, the fact when they throw the green flag, Jeff Bodine just jumps out to about a 10-car lead advantage and stays there. There's Buddy Baker in the car number 90. I saw him slow coming off the second corner, and it looks like he has got a serious problem. It's like the engine has let go on that car. He's on the apron of the racetrack in turn number four. He's pitted on the back stretch. Meanwhile, here comes the field at full speed off of corner number four and completes lap number 11. The 
cars are using Goodyear radial tires for the first time at this facility, and Goodyear is donating $1,000 to the Winston Cup Racing Wives Auxiliary in the name of today's pole sitter, Jeff Bodine. Now here's Ken Schrader again looking inside of Brett Bodine at the end of the backstretch. An outstanding qualifying performance by Brett Bodine this best of the year. That quicker state field in fourth position. But look at that two tone. Well, there you're looking at the shot now that Dick Trickle automobile right behind Harry again. And already Trickle's picked up a stone in his windshield. It's cracked. Now, what complications could that lead to later? Could that uh, increase and cause a problem for him? I don't think at the speed they run here in Darlington, that will make the windshield cave in. As Harry Gant tries to get alongside Neil Bonnet, makes the move going in turn three. Looked like Neil just backed off once Gant got up there and, and let him have the group. That's from the bumper cam on Harry Gant's car. Now, remember, he is the defending champion of this race. Remember a year ago when he won here and stopped that long losing streak? Here again, the helmet cam on Gant as he sets the car into the turns first to one and two. And he has a cracked windshield. Just above the steering wheel, there is a crack in his windshield. Bumper cam looking back on Neil Bonnet and Dick Trickle to the right. Trickle passing Neil Bonnet as Neil has lost two positions here in the last lap. We have had a caution already. It happened just a few laps ago, and this was the reason. Butch Miller. You can see he went into turn three. The car got loose and around. He went almost around. He got it gathered back in before it went completely around. Of course, uh, the caution did come out. He came in, got four new tires, so he's back in the field. Again, we're riding with Harry Gant with the camera mounted on his helmet. And now, let's go inside of Dick Trickle's car. Here it is, as Gant is right ahead of him now. And again, notice on the right side of the windshield, the little crack that's formed. At Talladega, that will become a major problem. At Talladega, that could be a serious problem at 200 miles per hour. Let's go to the pit area and Jerry Punch with more on this, Jerry. Well, Bob, one of the wind, one of the hazards here at Darlington is indeed what you're seeing now. Already Harry Gann and Dick Trickle and a couple others are showing some cracks in the windshield. But most of the team's prepared for that. I'm in the Ernie Urban pit, and they have a windshield stacked here behind pit road. Now, it's a plexiglass windshield backed by Lexan. That's the safety feature to keep this windshield from actually imploding inside on the driver. Now, one thing you see here at Darlington is a lot of gravel, therefore a lot of punctures and cracks in the windshield. But that's the reason the radials are so effective here. They are cut or puncture resistant. Where in years past, you may see a dozen or two tires cut or punctured. Today, you probably see less than three or four because of the stability of the radial tires. All right, thank you, Jerry. Stability showing in the cars of Ernie Irvin and Mark Martin as they run second and third behind our leader, Jeff Bodine. Meanwhile, we have some cars that are moving up from that position on the grid that Ned and Benny visited earlier, 15 through 20. Here is the number three car of Dale Earnhardt, the winner of last year's Southern 500 here at Darlington, and the defending Winston Cup champion, Rusty Wallace, as they try to make their way through the field. I think Dale. everybody expected Dale Earnhardt to move up through the field, regardless of where he qualified. You just automatically expect him to move up through the field. He started 15th and uh, is now 10th, Dale Earnhardt, and here's Mark Martin trying to make a move on Ernie Irvin for second position. He got the nose under Irving, Irvin, Ernie. That's tough to say. Ernie Irvin coming off the second corner, but not able to get back in the gap, full throttle, and make the pass. Mark Martin started second, running third on the field. Already being left is J.D. McDuffie, car number 70, the Rumpel Furniture entry. The number 28 car of Davey Allison has decided to visit pit road for an unscheduled stop here's a guy who is trying to turn his season around he's finished second and third here the last two years however is in for an early stop dick bergman is in the vicinity dick well bob all they're doing is changing right side tires and jerry punch is right it's unlikely a tire cut down so it's more likely than not that either they had a tire equalized or they simply didn't like the setup now all the practice and qualifying that was done here for this event was done under cloudy overcast drizzle sky 
the racetrack we see today is being run under sunny skies. We've got a very different situation for the cars, and a lot of guys were taking guesses as to what the setup should be. Well, Davy Allison goes a lap down because of that unscheduled stop, and you are right, Dick. The weatherman has been predicting just terrible weather all weekend. We were able to get in the Bush Grand National Race yesterday, won by Harry Gant, and we woke up this morning with some fog, but it is beautiful right now. And here's the number 42 car of Kyle Petty trying to fend off the challenge of Dale Earnhardt at number three. Kyle, of course, the winner with radial tires at Rockingham a few weeks ago. And now Dale Earnhardt goes to the high side of the racetrack in an effort to get by that number 42 car. And here comes the number five car, Ricky Rudd. Dale Earnhardt just passed Ricky Rudd just a couple of laps ago, gained another spot. And then Ned and I talked about this guy at the beginning of the show. He might have qualified 15th, but you certainly do not count him out. Look, on the inside, is he going to hold? Wow. You're not supposed to pass right there. And here comes Rudd falling in right behind. Oh, and Earnhardt and Petty touch and Petty spins. Rudd got on the brakes and almost avoided, but couldn't. Here's Alan Kowicki spinning in there, and once you go into that turn and trouble gets in front of you, there's nowhere to go. You lock the brake, try your best to get through there, and sometimes you just don't. Well, if there's no other damage to Ricky Rudd's car, he's probably missing the floorboard because he had his foot all the way through <laughs> it trying to get stuck. And look, Kyle Petty, it does look like a lot of damage to Kyle Petty's car. Yeah, I think he can fix that. Okay, let's take a look at it once again. All right, here's Earnhardt coming off a of turn four, gets on the inside of Kyle Petty. Here's Ricky Rudd in the yellow car coming up behind as they come off of the turn. Go down to front straightaway. Everything looks okay as they start down into turn one. Rudd drafting right up on the back bumper of Dale Earnhardt to come across the start-finish line. And then as they go into turn one, Kyle Petty comes down a little bit too quick, catches Earnhardt in the right rear, and he causes Kyle to lose control. And look at Ricky Rudd, the evasive move that he... The move of the century, it looks like, <laughs> follows him right in there, and then all of a sudden he cuts her square left, gets a little piece of it, and then he gets hit from behind, was spinning that around. That was Kit Rusty Wallace, yeah. and there's Davy Allison, the other black car spinning. Well, let's go to Jerry Punch, who's in the uh, pit of the leader, Jeff Bodine. Jeff Bodine is getting service in the Budweiser 4. Junior Johnson now putting a little bite in the left rear of the car. Bodine had commented that the car was getting quite loose. Let's check on Dick Berger down at Earnhardt's pit. Dick? Well, for what I can see, Jerry, the car is just fine. In fact, the crew was unsure that Earnhardt had even touched anybody on the racetrack. They said everything is okay. It's going to be a four-tire change. Everybody up and down pit road is doing this. They had planned on doing a four-tire change. Bodine is out, and here goes Earnhardt. Traffic coming out of the pits. Ernie Urban crew made a good pit stop, so he comes out right behind Jeff Bodine. Crew cam working on Kyle Petty's car. You notice the damage there in the left rear. That three backed in the wall. He hit the wall just a little bit with the left rear. They've got to get that quarter panel out so they can get some fuel in the car and also get the quarter panel away from the tire. And, of course, they want to try to do that and not lose a lap. A little further down pit road, they're working on Rusty Wallace's car. And there is Rusty's car, and Jerry Punch is there. Mary Dotson and Jimmy Maycar and crew are trying to get some of the cheap metal pulled away. Rusty was trying to get on the brakes up in turn one, was unable to get the car slowed enough. He tagged the, the right side of the car against the concrete machine wall. They have bent some cheap metal in. Rusty's trying to get out to beat the caution car. He just moved back on the racetrack. He will be coming back down pit road here momentarily. They have a lot of work to do in the front of that car. Not only is the right front tire towed in a little bit, there's considerable sheet metal damage in the right front, which they'll have to peel away before they get back to green flag racing. Bob? So several cars are damaged in an accident on lap number 24 here at the Trans South 500 in Darlington, South Carolina. We'll be back with more of our live coverage after this. We are one lap away from the restart of the Trans South 500 following a crash. That's Alan Kowicki changing tires on the left side. Now they've completed the service on his car, and Kowicki goes back out onto the racetrack. Let's take a look once again at what happened to cause our second caution of the day. Well, we see Earnhardt on the inside of Kyle Petty, and Ricky Rudd moves up right on the tail of Earnhardt. Now, Kyle Petty, when he gets down to turn one, he wants to get back to the bottom of the racetrack where the groove is, and he just cuts it a little bit too close. See, so he wanted to get in that gap between Rudd and Dale Earnhardt, unable to make it just a little bit too close. Let's go quickly to Jerry Punch and Rusty Wallace's pit. 
start with Jimmy Maycar. Jimmy, what's the, what's the damage assessment on the car? Uh, right now, other than you know, cheap metal on the right front, it looks like the tow wind's knocked out on the right front. We didn't get a chance to fix it. We're having to work on the sheet metal, so the right front tire's towed out a little bit. We need to fix it next time we come in. Gonna have his hands full for a while, Bob, but they're gonna try to run it here for a few laps. Green flag comes out once again on lap number 26. Mickey Gibbs at number 01 is the leader of the race. Davey Allison gets his lap back. That's the car that has pulled away from everybody else. Meanwhile, here comes Jeff Bodine, Ernie Irvin, Brett Bodine, and others as they pass Mickey Gibbs. And the 94 car on the inside of Mark Martin takes that position away. Great move by Sterling Marlin. And now Dale Earnhardt goes by Mark Martin. I don't know if Mark has a problem or he just can't get the car going because of the traffic. Benny Duncan says that it takes a lap or two to really get a good solid feel of these radio tires. So that's what I thought until Jeff Bodine, the car 11, qualified on Friday. And <laughs> It didn't take too long to get him going. Well, here's a big A Auto Parts pit stop performance on Ernie Irvin. It took the driver 15 seconds as far as slowdown and speed up time. It took the crew 24.4 seconds for a total pit stop of 39.4 seconds for Ernie Irvin and the crew. And he still finds himself in second position right behind Jeff Bodine and giving him a good run. Yeah, he's able to stay a little bit closer to Jeff than he was earlier. Meanwhile, in front of those two cars, Davey Allison is up there trying. There we see the black car. That's Davey Allison trying desperately to stay there so he can get a lap back to the caution track. For the fans that might have just joined us, Davey Allison made an unscheduled pit stop a little bit earlier for right side tires, and that did put him one lap down. But he is back in the lead lap if he can stay out there. Certainly that pit stop performance showed that there was consistency because Ernie Irvin came into the pits in second position, and that's exactly where he is now as the race has been restarted. Now, many of you are having difficulty, and many of you in the 703 and 704 area codes are having trouble getting into that 900 number to register for the Gillette Halfway Challenge. If that's the case, dial this number, 201-343-0021. Again, that's 201 area code, 343-0021. For those of you in the 703 and 704 area codes, if you are having a trouble with the 900 number, that registers you for that Pontiac Grand Prix and the right guard halfway challenge. So Jeff Bodine leads Ernie Irvin, the number 42 car of Kyle Petty. There he is, struggling to get back up front after a run-in with Dale Earnhardt in the early going. Let's go down to Jerry Punch, who is with the crew chief, Gary Nelson. Indeed, he is struggling, Bob. Let's check with Gary. Gary, how bad is the car hurt? Well, the left front suspension took a pretty hard hit. They chambered it off, and it's towed out. It's not running real bad right now, but definitely not up to full speed. Uh, we're going to need kind of a long time to do some work on it and maybe assess the damage a little more. But I guess the track just gets real narrow going into turn one. Now, how long will it take you to fix it? It'll take it uh, four or five, maybe six caution laps at least, wouldn't it? Well, the first thing is to figure out everything that's bent and then hopefully be able to fix it and get the alignment back. You know, normally it takes us a couple hours to align the car in the shop. But if we have, if we're fortunate and it's uh, easy to change parts, we can do it in four or five laps. Then if the caution's out, we should be able to do it without losing a lap. Well, Kyle may have had a pretty easy ride at Rockingham, but he's going to have his hands full here today. Well, he is, definitely has his hands full, but one guy that is charging is the number three car, driven by Dale Earnhardt. Started back in 15th position, has crashed Brett Bodine, and now runs third, and look at him close in on first and second. Moving up on the turn, he has a particular route that he runs this race back. Let's watch him go into turn one. He goes in a little bit low, and then he lets the car drift up close to the wall. Look at him, he'll go a little bit higher than the other drivers, but that gives him a good run off of that turn. You can see he picks up a little speed as he comes off of there. Then by the time they get into turn three, he has picked up a couple of more car lanes. This is bad news for the other competitors because they felt like when they, when Earnhardt, when the races were run on radial tires, the Goodyear radial, that Earnhardt and his crew did not have them figured out quite as well as the bias fly tire and would give them a better opportunity to win. It looks like Earnhardt and Richard Childers now has figured out the radial tire. Look at Dale Earnhardt from a shot out back of the Ernie Urban car. 
Let's go to Dick Berggren for a comment on Pitt Road about the guys that are going for their first win here this afternoon at, at uh, Darlington. Well, there are a lot of guys going for their first win here this afternoon, Bob Jenkins and Darlington. A whole bunch of them up and down Pitt Road, in fact. And this is one of the toughest racetracks in the place to do it, the whole circuit. They all say that this is the track that you have to run the track. You can't race each other. In fact, this morning I was talking to Dale Earnhardt about the radial tires. And he's a guy that's got a reputation for hustling a car. And I said, Dale, can you throw the car around here? Can you hustle it with the radials? He said, boy, you hustle a car at Darlington, you're going to hustle it right They've all got to be very careful if anybody's going to have a hope to win this thing this afternoon. Well, they sure don't appear to be too careful there right now. Look at him trying to make that pass off a of turn four again like he did on Kyle Petty, but that didn't quite work with Ernie Irvin. Oh, boy, that got my heart pumping, I'll tell you that. Wow. Dale Earnhardt all over Ernie Irvin for second. And as you can see, there's a group of cars also running behind Dale Earnhardt a little bit, including Sterling Marlin and Brett Bodine. They're all going for fourth position. And they might be catching that front pack, too. You know, it looks to me like it was Junior Johnson made that chassis adjustment on the 11 car, and he's not quite as good as he was before. Let's go to Jerry Punch, who has a comment on Dale Earnhardt as he again tries to go for second place. Jerry. Dale Earnhardt trying to make a move, and no surprise at all to his crew here at Darlington. This is what they call their radial race car. This is the car they had to bring out at Richmond when they wrecked their primary car in the final practice session. Remember, at Richmond, they started shotgun on the field, and in 30 laps, he was running fifth. I asked Dale Earnhardt, hey, can you run fifth here in 30 laps? He said, hey, by 30 laps, I'll be third. Well, we're 37 laps in. He's third. He was right. <laughs> yeah, pretty good estimation, I would say. Now look how close he runs up behind the curve. He's doing nothing but intimidating that young fellow, but so far, it's uh, not uh, yielding to him. He's kept his cool, I'm for sure. You know, they have t-shirts with his picture on it says intimidator. And they're right, because that's all he's doing is trying to intimidate Ernie Irving. this track exceptionally well too he's had some good finishes here on this racetrack was in position i believe it was a year ago to win this race and had some tire problems but he always runs well here and he is running the line totally different than everyone else that is going to do. he's running on the bottom of the racetrack we watched earnhardt go in and let the car drift up sterling Holland is able to keep that sonoco automobile on the bottom of the racetrack Sterling was fifth in the 1989 Trans South 500. He was tenth in the Southern 500 last fall. We'll take a look at the top 15 as we take another break from the Trans South 500 in Darlington, South Carolina. Jeff Bodine leads Dale Earnhardt, Ernie Irvin, and others. We'll be right back. And South 500, the lead being held by Jeff Bodine in the number 11 car. And in second position now is Dale Earnhardt in car number three. Here they come down the front straightaway. There's Earnhardt. Third place belongs to Ernie Irvin. In fourth is Sterling Marlin. And in fifth position is Greg Sachs. Let's go to Jerry Punch, who's with Tim Brewer. We see Earnhardt beginning to reel in Jeff Bodine on the racetrack, and they made a chassis adjustment here in the Budweiser pits. And Timmy, did the chassis adjustment affect the car? I mean, it seems to be slowing down a little bit. Well, you know, Junior, he stuck around the wedge in the left rear of the thing, but right now, Jeff Bodine and Dale Earnhardt know it's a long way to lap 367, so, you know, whoever's got the best set of tires on, that's the guy that's going to run the quickest. I'm assuming they put stickers on, we put a set of scuffs on. But, uh, it's a long day before it's all over with, so we're just going to sit here, and if it's not quite comfortable right now, we're not going to press the racetrack. We're going to let Dale Earnhardt go ahead and do what he wants to do. Apparently, Junior Johnson has instilled in Shimon, New York, Jeff Bodine, a good game of playing possum here at Darlington. Gentlemen? Well, Junior has eight wins here at Darlington. Last in 1984, Trans South 500 with Darrell Walter. For once again, with uh, Harry Gann and the camera mounted on the side of his helmet, that was Terry Cope. Well, he looks 
like he's on a roller coaster in there, doesn't he? Huh? He always just looks straight ahead. You know, he'll glance into the mirror every once in a while. Most of the time, when they go into the turn, they'll glance into that mirror to see who's behind them or who might be coming up beside of them. But he's uh, always looking straight ahead. You can hear him decelerate going into turn three. That's why they say peripheral vision is so important to a race car driver because you don't really have to turn your head to see what's beside of you. And now Dale Earnhardt has closed within a car length and a half of Jeff Bodine. Let's see if Earnhardt makes a pin for the lead here. Brewer said we'll just wait and see what Earnhardt wants to do. Well, pretty obvious what he wants to do, isn't it? For one thing, he wants to get five Winston Cup points, being the leader of this race. Leading lap number 48. 397 make up this 500-miler here at Darling. able to intimidate Jeff Bodine too much. The guy on the right of your screen has been very impressive here in the first 48 laps. That is Greg Sachs, and you can see he is closing in on Sterling Marlin and Ernie Irvin running fifth. And that's the Tom Cruise automobile that's going to be used in Days of Thunder. It has City Chevrolet sponsorship here this afternoon. I think in the movie it's got mellow yellow, but you know, unbelievable. This is the leader, the lead car in the Hendrick stable. Of the four cars Rick Hendrick has in the race this afternoon, the car is up for this is Greg Sachs. Now, doesn't this car win the race in the movie? So maybe it don't know any better. <laughs> yeah, that's what it's supposed to win. Yeah. Dick Bergman has a further comment on Greg Sachs. Well, Bob, that automobile is a brand new race car that they brought down here. The original plan was to do what they did in the Daytona 500 and start in the back and just film some things. But NASCAR said, no, nope, if you're going to bring that thing down here, we're going to have to get it in the race and run it. So Rick Hendrick said, hey, as long as we got to run it, we're going to race. So Bodine's strategy is whatever the movie guys want to do is fine with him, but he is going out for the win. And he's got a lot to prove here this afternoon. He does not have a full-time ride. If he can score a good run here this afternoon, it surely is going to help. This young man is trying to plant his feet in the Hendrick organization, leading himself to something solid for 1991. Well, I'm sure it didn't disappoint Greg Sachs when he was told that he had the opportunity to run hard this afternoon and try to win this race. He ran so strong at the Daytona Bush Clash and now finds himself in fifth position here. And we're hearing a lot of the uh, comments from the pit area that these guys are pretty loose at the moment. Well, you know, Greg Sachs had pulled up right behind these two cars that are running third and fourth, but now he has dropped back some. Now we again watch Dale Earnhardt right on the back bumper of Jeff Bodine. First and second here, they cross the stripe, lapping H.B. Bailey in car number 36. Dale Earnhardt has been unable to pass the leader, Jeff Bodine. And those two cars in front of Jeff Bodine is... That's Davey Allison in the front car, and that is Rusty Wallace going to lap down. Look, the split the difference, three abreast down the back straightaway. And you can see Davey Allison with a hand gesture to the guys in back from saying, okay, guys, come around, come around. I'll give you the room because Allison is also not, not quite up to speed with that car. Well, he was able to stay out there at a pretty good distance in front of Jeff Bodine until Earnhardt came up there. Then uh, Bodine had to turn up the wick a little bit, so now they're running Davey Allison down. That was Rusty Wallace that just put a lap down. Here goes Earnhardt. Earnhardt off of corner number two, sneaks inside, pulls alongside of Jeff Bodine. Let's see what happens as they head for the narrow turn number three, and Earnhardt grabs a lead. Watch Jeff try to come back. Oh, Earnhardt <laughs> wiggles a little bit. Bodine comes right back on the inside, but Dale Earnhardt will lead lap number 54. So that will give him five Winston Cup bonus points. If you lead a lap in Winston Cup competition, you get five bonus points. The driver who leads the most laps during the race gets another five bonus now, points. Now good battle for third shaping up here. Here's Ernie Irvin and Sterling Marlin. As they pass Rusty Wallace to the inside, so obviously that little shunt that Rusty was involved in with Kyle Petty and others has made that car uh, very difficult to handle. Yeah, Jimmy Maycar said the toe-in toe was towed out too much, and 
that certainly will make it tough to get around the turn here. And here's the part we haven't talked about all afternoon. Morgan Shepard in the red-white 15, the motocraft quarter owned by Bud Moore. Look, he's up behind Brett Bodine. Shepard running in seventh place. Brett Bodine running in the sixth position. Morgan Shepard, of course, with a very good run in Atlanta two weeks ago, finishing second in that race, almost won it. Ooh, he's boy. a little loose, too. Did he wiggle severely up in the third corner? Morgan Shepard has moved up nicely in the first 55 laps. He started 19th, was at 10th, lap number 35, and currently is running in 8th position at the end of 55 laps. That's pretty good progression on the track like that. You know, people thought that this combination of marriage between Bud Moore and Morgan Shepard would not work. But so far, they have proved that those fellows wrong because it has worked very, very well. Shepard currently in second place in the Western Cup point standings behind Dale Earnhardt. Mark Martin is also creeping up to make this a three-car battle in the number six machine. Morgan takes his 15 car high on the racetrack between turns one and two, but here comes Mark Martin as you can see him closing in. Now you can see the interval that Dale Earnhardt has opened up on second place Jeff Bodine. So at the moment, this Trans South 500 is in the hands of Dale Earnhardt. ESPN Speed World today in Darlington, South Carolina for the Trans South 500 Winston Cup race. And we have completed 61 laps. And the guy that was running in fifth spot, Greg Sachs, well, he's had some problems. It's slowing on the racetrack, and it looks like his afternoon may be over. I believe the engine has let go on that Chevrolet, Bob. There was a little smoke coming from it. That might be the reason we saw him run up there behind the third and fourth place car a little while ago. Then he backed off the car. was probably overheating, and he was just trying to cool it. But I believe it's got the best of it. You know, that was going to be a problem for the guys this afternoon because it has to be at least 20 degrees warmer this afternoon than it's been all weekend. And I don't know how you can figure out how, to, how much grill opening to run or anything else with the temperature we've had Thursday, Friday, and Saturday as well as jetting the carburetor, which has a great deal to do with the engine temperature. So Greg is going to come down and go into his assigned slot here on Pitt Road. Will not take the car behind the wall, at least for the moment. They'll look inside to see if it might be a repairable problem and maybe get Greg back out on the racetrack. Having a good run, was running fifth when the problem occurred. Let's go to Dick Bergeron, who perhaps can tell us more. Dick? Well, I really wish I could, but right now there's not an awful lot to say. The mechanics are just looking the car over. One has just pointed his thumb in the direction of the garage area, and that's always a bad sign. The hood goes down. Apparently, the engine has expired. And so they will take the 46 car behind the wall and back into the garage area. The day's over for Greg Sachs. On the racetrack, meanwhile, it continues to be a Dale Earnhardt story as he has the lead now, and he's about to put a lap on Kyle Petty in car number 42. These two came together right there a few laps ago, causing some damage on the 42 car. And the number 28 car of Davey Allison also got a lap down. However, he has made it up and has been able to stay ahead of the leader, Dale Earnhardt. Remember a while ago you said Davey Allison waved yep. to him, said, come on, guys, go by. They can't catch him That's to go by. That's not what he was waving. <laughs> He's probably waving to Rusty Wallace, who he was passing at that time. But anyway, he has been able to stay ahead of the leader, Dale Earnhardt. There he is moving into turn number one, just behind the Jimmy Dean star. Second place machine driven by Jeff Bodine. And then right there in third spot, not too far behind Jeff, is Ernie Irvin at number four. And not too far behind him, we just saw the yellow hood of Sterling Marlins on the Oldsmobile. And running in fifth place is uh, Kenny Schrader right now. I think I left him out when, when we were talking about Brett Bodine and Morgan Shepard back there a moment ago. Kenny Schrader was ahead of him at that particular point. He's running fifth. And, uh, of course, in sixth now is Morgan Shepard. Greg Sachs out of the race. Dick Bergeron with him. Well, it ran awfully well while it ran, but it didn't run long enough. Well, Dick, you know, City Chevrolet Lumina was real strong. Uh, I'm disappointed we dropped out so early, but uh, we had a little engine trouble. I'm just looking forward to Talladega when we come out with a new color. It's an ultra-slim fast. Got a lot of things to look forward to this year. 
you get a radial tire here at Darlington for the first time today, Greg. Would you evaluate his performance thus far in the event? I felt right from the start of practice that the tire was working great. Very predictable, nothing, no surprises. Uh, the stagger stays the same all day. I think it's going to be a real good day for Goodyear. Good marks on the tire. Greg Sachs will watch the rest of this race from the pit area. Battle for second position, a good one. Number 11, Jeff Bodine, and number four, Ernie Irvin as they pass Kyle Petty. Let's go inside Ernie Irvin's car. Now you can see there seems to be a light on in that car. Is that really a light on? No, that's a fuel pressure. That's a light that when he gets low on fuel will come on, but that's just the, the sun reflecting off that yellow lens is what we're seeing. Because he pitted just a few laps ago and filled it up with gasoline. You see the sun once again reflecting on that yellow light. There's, that's the yellow light. There's one beside of that that is a red light. If that comes on, you got that's trouble. big trouble. Yeah. yeah, that means the engine is blown up. <laughs> Sometimes you don't need a light to tell you that, <laughs> is it? <laughs> right. out in California watching this at your own Modesto's Ernie Irvin in the Kodak Film Oldsmobile following Jeff Bodine in the Budweiser Ford for second place. I should have slapped the New York fans who should cheer for Jeff Bodine, should I? Upstate New York. Come on. We'll be in that area later on in the season as we televise the Winston Cup race from Watkins Glen. Ernie hasn't made any real serious attempt to pass Jeff Bodine. He knows that this is a long race and a tough track, and uh, he just wants to keep his nose clean for a while. The number 20 car driven by Rob Moroso and the 9 car of Bill Elliott. This is for 10th position, 10th and 11th here. Rob Moroso, of course, a rookie on the Winston Cup Trail in 1990, leading the rookie points at the moment and the veteran, Bill Elliott, who won the Winston Million here at this track not too long ago. And you certainly can't count Bill Elliott out on this racetrack either. He's a good, smooth driver. He knows he has won here in the past. In fact, he won a million dollars here a few years ago. And uh, you just can never count him out here. There's a lot of traffic here. Brett Bodine also, oh, Rick Wilson really squirrely coming off the second corner. Here comes Moroso to the inside to pass him, and Bill Elliott will also try to as they go into turn number three. Let's see if Rick Wilson goes up enough for Bill Elliott to get alongside. He does. Elliott dies on the inside. That's the preferred position. Takes a spot away from Rick Wilson. And that's Michael Waltrip in that other yellow car that is playing the Rick Wilson number 75. Those are the cars from about ninth through 15th position. You know, I was talking to Michael Walter and just before the race started coming up here, and I didn't get a chance to speak to Daryl, but Michael told me his dad, Leroy, is, is feeling bad, and uh, say hello to him back in Orangeburg, Kentucky. Leroy, the boys are okay. They're not leading, but they're doing okay. And let's also say hello to Ralph Seagraves, who's in the hospital in Winston-Salem, North Carolina, and Dick Hasek. Uh, both very popular figures around the next car Winston Cup circuit. Here's Daryl Waltrip at 1766 and uh, driven by Dick Prickle as he carries the Phillips 66 in car camera. Well, again, we'd like to remind you to uh, register for the Right Guard Halfway Challenge by dialing 1 900 246 0101. Now, the call will cost you 95 cents, but you can register to possibly win a Pontiac Grand Prix after the halfway point. For those of you that live in the 703 area code and cannot get into the 900 number, dial this number, 201 343 0021. That's for those of you that live in the 703 and 704 area codes, the number to dial 201 343 0021. Well, this has turned out to be a heck of a race here. There's six or seven cars joined this race. Well, let's see Dick Trickle running behind Daryl Walter running in 13th position. Walter running in. Ooh, oh, boy, did he get close That's to Jack Penny. Jack Pennington, one of the other rookie candidates in Winston Cup racing, he's to the inside of the track. And now, Trickle and Rudd will be able to pass him. 
to see how much distance he lost to Darrell Walter for that little bobble yep. over in turn three where the racetrack is so very, very narrow trying to get in that corner. Well, here comes Ernie Irvin making a bid for second place. He goes to the inside of boat nine. They touch coming up the corner. Irvin's going to lose it right here on the main straightaway. Irvin spins down the front stretch, and I don't think he's going to hit a thing. Not yet, anyway. Not yet anyway. And he <laughs> saves it. The caution flag comes out, so it might be a break. Ernie, if he can get back around and get four new tires, we'll be all set. Man. Irvin trying to go inside of Jeff Bodine, coming off the fourth corner, and Waston spun down the straightaway and didn't hit a thing. He's going to make the camera dizzy with that spin. <laughs> and he doesn't look a bit worse <laughs> for the wear. Here it is again. Well, he tries to make a move like Earnhardt did on him a little bit earlier in the race. He said, if Earnhardt can do it, I can do it. But the car slipped up into Bodine, touched him just enough to cause him to lose control, spins it the wrong way down the front straightaway, and at least he leaves a groove on each side of him so the cars can go by that are behind him. And we certainly got to say hats off to everybody that was following him, too, because they managed to scramble around. Here it is from another angle. He just gets a little bit out of control. Tries to save the car, but it makes too many sideways motions. And look, if he had just drove back across the racetrack, he would have got Schrader and Morgan Shepard and himself. Here comes Dick Johnson, who will turn the wheel at the last moment and avoid hitting the car. And Jimmy Means is way down on the inside. You know, Dick Johnson did something there. That Dale Earnhardt is coming down pit road. So is everybody else. And let's go to Dick Bergeron, who is in Dale Earnhardt's pit. Uh, it looks like it's going to be a four-tire change everywhere. The competitors are saying that as the tires get more and more laps on them, the cars tend to drift up the speedway. So we're going to see everybody change four tires, get four fresh ones to try to improve their speed. This is going down all up and down pit road. Now, Earnhardt is way up at the middle of pit road. Bodine, his primary competitor, is all the way at the other end, but Earnhardt is done already and on his way out. Earnhardt on his way out pit road. Alan Kowicki pulls out. Here comes Ken Schrader also moving off pit road. Morgan Shepard is out. Let's go to Jerry Punch, who's with the four car of Ernie Irvin. Well, Tony Glover, the rest of the Kodak crew are watching for Ernie Irvin. He's saying, Let's go down pit road. He has to jump to the right. He's hitting. He pulls down to Ernie very calmly, pulls the car in. And he has basically four tires that are completely flat that are going down. They're like a four tire change here in the Kodak pit. They have the right side of the car jacked up. They have changed tires. The Kyle Petty car and Davey Allison go by. Now they will jump around on the left side and change left side tires. The left side tires holding up very well, and they are watching the pace car to make sure Ernie Irwin does not put the lamp. Great pit work here as he leaves pit road and heads back to turn one. Well, he did not lose a lap after that little incident coming off the fourth corner, and here is a replay of the incident from the in-car camera slow motion, first of all. He dives inside Jeff Bodine, Jeff Bodine just to the right. About here's where they touch. He gets out of control, comes back, almost hits Jeff again. I think he did touch Jeff again. Around he goes. Now the engine has died. When those lights come on, that means the engine is no longer running. He sees a lot of real estate there, doesn't he? <laughs> now here is a real-time replay. Well, the sound of tires screeching only didn't did hit you, anything. Did you hear that little bit of a bump? That was a tire blowing out. Okay. <laughs> So Ernie Irvin stays on the lead lap, and he'll begin his charge back to the front here at the Trans South 500. Winston Cup replays are brought to you by Purolator, the world's largest filter company. The 33rd annual Trans South 500 in 1989, and after two early season wins, Darrell Waltrip saw his chance at a third rushed. Dale Earnhardt found the first turn wall to be tough. He would lose his early season points lead to Alan Kowicki. Rusty Wallace also found the turn one wall, but he would recover to finish eighth. Harry Gant ended a long winless streak that lasted nearly four years and found victory lane, and also the pleasure of shaking that monkey off his back.
That was a year ago here at Darlington. Currently, Harry Gann is running 15th. This is the reason we are under caution. Ernie Irvin touching Jeff Bodine, coming off corner four. And, of course, he spins around. And everyone else gets by. And Ernie Irvin, it seems the only problems that he has maybe is a, a tire problem. And let's go inside again and take a look as a real-time in-car camera replay and listen for the tire to blow. There you heard it. Jerry, what's it look like? Well, the tires are here, Bob. Actually, these are the tires that came off the Ernie Irvin car. Apparently, as he cut a tire coming off the corner, he hit was spun the car. But the reason he was able to spin and control the car, much like what happened to Dale Earnhardt in turn three on the final lap of the Daytona 500, is this new inner liner that Goodyear has here. This inner liner here allowed him to control the car. It is still inflated inside. We are back to green. Indeed we are with Dale Earnhardt once again out front. Second position is the number 11 car of Jeff Bodine. In third place is Sterling Marlin. Fourth is Ken Schrader. And fifth is Morgan Shepard, the number seven car, which was in your shot there. There he is on the right. That's Alan Kowicki, and he is a lap down. And, Bob, we'll see another car that's going to show up in the run down here before too long. That'll be Davey Allison, who was running out in front of Dale Earnhardt when that monster came out. So he's back in the thick of this race. He was able to stay out in front of the leaders for a long period of time there. His car is fast. He took the green flag in 16th position. Davey Allison did. So that car uh, earlier, we thought it wasn't up to full song, but indeed it is. And he may be uh, something to uh, look for here. Well, he did make an unscheduled pit stop for a change of right side tires. That's what put him a lap down, but he has now has gotten that lap back. Could be a factor later on. It looks to me like the Tim Brewer, Junior Johnson, the Budweiser crew has done something to Jeff Bodine's car. Maybe they put stickers on this time because, look, he's got a lot more strength now than he had the last time. Yeah, he's uh, definitely working on Earnhardt a little bit harder. Earnhardt had passed him earlier, and now, ooh, boy, did they come close. <laughs> Guys, we know what happens when you touch. We just saw it about five minutes ago. We've seen it twice already today. Jeff Bodine running second behind Dale Earnhardt, and there also in the shot is the third place car of Sterling Marlin. Now let's take a look at the Big A Auto Parts pit stop performance by Dale Earnhardt. You can see his driver time was 19.6, crew time 22.3, the total time 41.9. That was the best among the ones we checked. The 94 car, Sterling Marlin, had a total time of 42.8. And the four car of Ernie Irvin, they had a total time of 49.4 seconds, including the time it takes for the driver to slow down and speed up and the time it takes the crew to complete their work. You know, Bob, we've talked about Dale Earnhardt being an intimidator. Jeff Bodine does a pretty good job of that, too. And he's trying his best to intimidate Earnhardt now. But look, he's going to be intimidated. Don't look on the inside, Jeff, for the car there. That's Sterling Marlin, who has caught the leaders and now makes it a three-car battle for the lead. Now, Bodine will try it between turns three and four right about here. No, he didn't do it. He disappointed me. Jeff, I thought she's going to try to get on the inside of him right there. Well, he's going to get a run so he can get him down the front right away. Okay. Here comes Jeff looking to the inside, going into one. Nope, he'll not do it. All that is is an intimidator move. Pull up on the inside and move out of the view of the mirror so the driver can't see him in front. So Earnhardt don't know where Bodine is, and there's an anxious moment going in the corner when you don't know where that guy is behind you. You guys really play psychological games out there? Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's part of the fun. <laughs> yeah, that's part of the fun. When you're in Jeff Bodine's position, yeah, ain't too right. much fun you're in Dale Earnhardt's position. And Sterling Marlin, he just watches it all. Certainly, Earnhardt is giving plenty of room down on the inside, especially in turn one and two, because he likes to run up high in the center of that turn. Does it every lap. Dale Earnhardt has five wins here at Darlington, looking for number six this afternoon. There are your front three cars. Not too far back there. You can see the red and white car, Morgan Shepard running in fourth place, Kenny Schrader in fifth.
say, fellas, those cars are pretty evenly matched. They sure are. I would give a little bit of difference in those two cars. It'll be interesting to see after they have run a while and get those tires heated up. Then you'll know who has the best chassis. And Benny Sterling Marlin still using that low groove, as we saw earlier, but it's working for him because he's able to stay right with him. You know, Ned, as the day wears on, that might be to his advantage because all these fellows are running up high on the racetrack, and that groove is going to get to be very, very slow Sterling can stay on the bottom of the racetrack. He's going to have some green racetrack to get a little off later on in the race. Well, good work to the Sterling's best finish in a Trans South 500 was fourth in 1987. And in the past three Trans South 500s, his finishes have been fifth, fifth, and fourth. So indeed, he knows how to run this racetrack. Currently, Sterling Marlin third behind Jeff Bodine and Dale Earnhardt. We'll be right back. Epis at Darlington International Raceway, the track too tough to tame, and Dale Earnhardt leads Jeff Bodine and Sterling Marlin with 95 out of 367 laps completed in this Trans South 500. We haven't mentioned it yet, but indeed there is Unical money available today, $15,200 if Jeff Bodine, who is second, can win this race. Let's go to Nick Bergman on pit road. Well, that a really interesting approach to emerge emerging technology here as we watch the top three cars. Jeff Bodine in the middle of the top three was one of the first to embrace the emerging technology of front steer race cars. Dale Earnhardt, who is right now running just in front of him, he just grabbed a hold of it. In fact, this is his very first race at Darlington with a front steer car. The guy running in third spot, Sterling Marlin, he hasn't grabbed it yet. He's one of two top cars. Harry Gant is the other, still running on rear steer cars. Now, Sterling Marlin says the rear steer car cuts better, and that's what he'd really rather run here. Earnhardt, meanwhile, has just radioed his crew and said he's got a vibration in the front end. Jerry punches down pit road for the 94. Jerry? Well, we're standing in the Sterling Marlin pits along with crew chief Steve Lawton. And Steve, Sterling is running a little bit closer to the bottom of the racetrack than of the front two cars. Why? Well, he said the car seems to be working better in the middle of the racetrack. I wanted him to move up high a little bit, Jerry. But we didn't pull as much gear as those guys are. We chose a little less gear for this long race, but he says it feels good where it's at. So if we stay there at the end of the race, we'll be, we should be all right. Now, guys in the booth, let me ask you, if you don't have as much gear in the car, what will happen later in the race when the track gets a little bit slicker? Caution, down in turn two. Car crashing trouble. in turn two is Dick Johnson up against the wall. Number 38 car slides to a stop at the top of the racetrack against the outer wall. We'll answer that question for you, Jerry, in a little bit. Meanwhile, we will watch the situation regarding Dick Johnson. The yellow flag comes out for the fourth time this afternoon. Johnson's car still stalled at the top of the racetrack, and the pits are closed. We'll take another break and be right back to Darlington, South Carolina. Under caution in the Trans South 500 for the fourth time this afternoon, a uh, incident over in turn number two involving Dick Johnson, the car sliding high and hitting the wall over there. Don't think there was any serious damage to the car or to uh, Dick, but the pace car has picked up the field, and we are under reduced speed for the fourth time this afternoon. Let's go to Jerry Punch, who has a comment on Jeff Bodine. A gentleman, Jeff Bodine, came in and pitted changed four tires. Tim Brewer and the Budweiser crew changed four tires in 20.9 seconds. And actually what happened was, you consider that's a great pit stop. In fact, it's a world record for four tire changes. But Brewer's air gun came apart and the spring came out of his air gun in the right front of the car. And he actually had to replace the last lug nuts by hand and borrow an air gun. Now all that and the problem with the spring in 20.9 seconds, a great pit stop. And Jeff Bodine is back in one of the lead cars here under caution. Let's go up to Dick Bergen on the Dale Earnhardt pit. Well, Jerry Punch, that yellow flag was very well timed for Dale Earnhardt. As we mentioned just before it happened, he had radioed his crew and said he had a little vibration. Then just before that yellow flag came out, he radioed again and said the vibration has gotten bad. The Goodyear guys took a look at the tires. They didn't find anything wrong with it. These pit stops are so fast, the team didn't really have an opportunity to look carefully at the suspension. So they've all got their fingers crossed that whatever that vibration was is gone away. No guarantees. 
Well, he is lined up, what, the sixth car in line, I believe, behind uh, the leader, Jeff Bodine, and Sterling Marlin, and Mark Martin, and uh, Michael Waldrop. You can see how he came, uh, Jeff Bodine came in in second position and went out as the leader on lap number 89. And the Big A Auto Parts pit performance on him showed that it took him 15.9 seconds to get in and out. The crew 23.1 for a total time of 39 seconds. Good pit stop for Jeff Bodine. And he is lined up as a leader as we are set to go back to racing. Ernie Irvin is in for a pit stop and the hood is up on that car. Jerry. Well, he had a serious vibration in the car and they're working on the car in the front end of the car apparently. They may have had a hose come look. There looked to be a lot of oil up inside the engine compartment, and apparently that's what happened. They had a vibration when maybe when they spun, they may have pulled a fitting off of one of the oil lines. That's a possibility of a brake fitting. Now I can get up where I can see it a little bit. And it's uh, one of the fittings in the front of the car that bobbed the brake line, so apparently that spin was much more possible than you realize. Ernie Irvin's now sitting on pit road with the car up on the jack stands under caution and he will lose a lap apparently as the field getting ready to come through turn three and four and they have no hope of getting this car back on the track so he definitely will lose at least one lap here to go back to green Bob? the problem is jerry the vibration of bringing the car all the way around the racetrack with a flat tire tears those fittings apart green flag back out on lap number 102 367 make up this race jeff bodine and sterling marlin pull away from the rest of the field as it comes off the second corner They're running first and second. Third is Mark Martin. Fourth is Michael Waltrip. Dale Earnhardt in fifth, and Earnhardt trying to take away that position. And Earnhardt moves to the inside of the yellow car. Michael Waltrip's and Dale Earnhardt goes to fourth place. Now begins to set his sights on the number six car, the Folgers machine driven by Mark Martin. We see the car number 94, Sterling Marling, running in second place. And here's a good battle Ooh. back in the pack. Everybody going to the inside to pass Mike Alexander, but look at the traffic. Bill Elliott is on the extreme left. Then comes Morgan Shepard right behind him. Now we see Neil Bonnet, who is uh, staying ahead of Bill Elliott and Morgan Shepard. Alan Kowicki. Green saw this battle. That was Derek Pope in the red and white car. The green car is Brett Bodine and Ricky Rudd in the yellow and white car behind Brett Bodine. Bill Elliott trying to get by Neil Bonnet pulls alongside of him, has position. Now it's a race down the back straightaway to turn three. Neil Bonnet is a lap down, so is Alan Kowicki. The number nine car of Bill Elliott is seventh, and the 15 of Morgan Shepard is in eighth position. And then here comes the 26 of Brett Bodine, Ricky Rudd, and Harry Gann. Harry Gann on the inside of him, trying to take that position away, has position. Here this it is. This is car camera. No, it's not. It's on Harry's head. Wait, what's the deal? It's steady this time. <laughs> that must be an end point. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's his head. Well, he is pretty steady now. He's, uh, maybe those muscles have just got, uh, got uh, yeah, I mean, toughened up to where they can, can hold out. As we said, the camera only weighs two ounces. Well, so I don't think that's a, I don't think it's, it was a nasty April Fool's oh, joke. Oh, you guys. <laughs> This isn't the uh, helmet cam. There it is. <laughs> I knew something was wrong. Na -na 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 -na. <laughs> well, we knew that sometime during the day they were going to do that to us. We knew the guys in the truck were going to fool one on us, and by the way, they did. <laughs> Ernie Irvin continues to sit on pit road, and they continue to work on that car. Jerry, update us, please. Well, he's losing a lot of valuable laps. He hoped to have a great run today, but this is the reason that he had to come in. We mentioned the oil fit. This is the one that came off the car. A little too hot to touch right now, but you see it bent and bowed considerably. And right inside the edge of the fitting here was where it was spewing oil out. That's why he had to come in and make the unscheduled stop. They're still trying to get a new fitting on the car. Some of the other lines are also bent inside the engine compartment, so he's still sitting here in the pit. So Ernie Irvin sits on pit road as now we're once again with Harry Gant, the helmet game. That's Working Brett on Rodine. Rodine. Yeah, Brett, Brett Rodine. I called him Ricky Rudd. That was a year ago. Brett Rodine is car number 26. And now is certainly showing more strength than he has any time during the day. And there's a bumper cam on Gant's car. He is showing some strength. He moved around Brett Rodine with ease. Ned, you owe a dollar to our Racing Wives Auxiliary Fund. Made we mistake. said the deal the first time we missed calling one of these cars and we to make us a donation. Oh.
here at the Trans South 500 in Darlington, South Carolina on this beautiful Sunday afternoon. Jeff Bodine leads with the moment over. Welcome back to Darlington International Raceway, NASCAR's oldest super speedway dating back to 1950. Today, live coverage of the Trans South 500, stop number five on the Winston Cup Tour for 1990. And the race is now 113 laps old, and Jeff Bodine has checked out. He has really opened the gap between himself and second place Sterling Marlin, third place Mark Martin, and the three car of Dale Earnhardt. Now, this battle involves the 75 car of Rick Wilson, Bill Elliott, and Morgan Shepard as we take a look at those who have dropped out of competition. Rick Wilson must be feeling awful good in that yellow number 75, the dinner bell Oldsmobile. I was talking to Rick yesterday about his season, and so far it has been miserable. But today, he's got a great run. This is for fifth, sixth, and seventh position. Morgan Shepard uh, was the loser, really, on that last round of pit stops. He came in and fourth, came out about eighth or ninth. But he has worked his way back up now to the seventh position. There are a lot of top contenders who are not in contention at this point in the race. And the reason is because of an accident that occurred very early on involving several Dale Earnhardt and Kyle Petty among them. This is what happened as the cars went into turn number one. Earnhardt and Kyle Petty try to go in turn one. Kyle tries to get on the bottom of the racetrack between Ricky Rudd and Earnhardt. And Kyle Petty spins. Rudd does a fabulous job missing him but along comes Rusty Wallace hits the Ricky Rudd automobile we see the 28 car spinning Alan Kowicki spinning Rusty Wallace had severe damage to his car he's not been competitive since then neither has the Ricky Rudd automobile and that's the reason why all of those guys are not in contention Rudd and Kyle Petty and Rusty Wallace they are all more than one lap down to the field. Accepting the car number five of Ricky Rudd, he still is in the lead lap, but Rusty Wallace and Kyle Petty are at least the lap down. Rick Wilson in fifth position, Bill Elliott in sixth, and in seventh position is Morgan Shepard in the number 15 car. Dick Trickles, Phillips 66 in car camera. That's Ken Schrader just ahead of him. Good battle for position going on here. The number 17 car is just ahead of Ken Schrader. That, of course, is a Darrell Waltrip. And the 21 car of Neil Bonnet. He's going right up against that wall. One reason is because Bobby Hilton is trying to get by him just to the left of the car. No, Hilton has to drop back. But 20, 25 goes by Darrell Waltrip. Waltrip tries to go back on the inside. He's not able to do that. Now, Ken Schrader made a late pit stop during that caution, so he has come from the rear of the field back to there. He was running sixth before the caution came out. In fact, he had been running fifth, but he was starting to drop back. That last caution was a real blessing for him because the handle had gone away on his Chevrolet. Here's Dick Trickle trying to look on the inside of Darrell Walters up in three and four. And that was one and two. Uh, Flair is beginning to become a problem, too, in some portions of the racetrack. Now they're going in turn three. Trickle looking for a place to go, isn't he? He has to get off the gasoline there because the car up in front's got him slowed down. That's the 21 car of Neil Monty, who is a lap down. Running in 22nd place. Showing 20 cars in the lead lap. Well, that glare is bad going in turn one. This early in the race. Sure is. Now Schrader goes inside of Neil Bonnet down the back stretch. He'll successfully pass Bonnet. And Darrell Waltrip will fall in behind Neil. He'll try to get alongside Neil to get position coming off turn four. He makes the pass. Dick Trickle now is behind uh, Neil Bonnet, and so is Bobby Hill. Of course, Trickle and Hillen are in the lead lap. Right now, the Trickle car being shown 14th position, and Bobby Hillen shown 15th. I couldn't see anything when that car went turn one. Did you, Bob? I know. The glare is just really bad down there going into one. You lose sight of everything for a moment. I'm glad I ain't that thing. Now, one thing, fellas, that uh, how long ago was it that the daylight saving time was changed? We're an hour That's last right. night. Yeah. yeah. Last night. Well, I know, but, but when did they start doing it this early in the year? And, you know, normally at the Trans-South, you 
you uh, wouldn't have this until late in the race, but it's an hour coming an hour earlier today. That's very, very possible. Trickle now once again looks inside of Neil Bonnet. Yeah, for some of us, we changed our clocks at 2 o'clock this morning, and others were a little late to uh, the crew call today because of that. <laughs> yeah, I got up at 2 this morning to change the time. Did you? <laughs> I'm sure. Isn't that what they said to do? Yeah, that's, that's right. what they tell you to do. That's right. Set the alarm for two o'clock. The lead, meanwhile, continues to be held by Jeff Bodine, and there are 20 cars on the lead lap. Here's a comment on Jeff's run by Jerry Punch. Well, the book on the radio continues to grow a little bit, and I think the Budweiser team has learned a valuable lesson early in the race here, about 70 laps ago. They made a pit stop, and they put what they consider to be scuffed tires. Tires they actually had run about 15 laps here on the Bodine car. What happened? Well, Sterling Marlin and Dale Earnhardt probably ran Bodine down and passed him. Well, on this last pit stop that came in, they put sticker tires, brand new radios back on the car. They made no chassis difference whatsoever on the car, just sticker tires. And what a difference Bodine has checked out. Let's see what's going on in the Earnhardt pit. Kirk Shelman on standing by with Nick Burke. Well, Kirk, your guy had had a problem with the vibration. You took on new tires. Is the vibration gone or is it still there? It's gone. We had a equalized tire. Well, Bodine is checking out, though. You guys seem to be drifting back. What's going on? Uh, yeah, Lev is probably the fastest car here. Uh, we got a couple cars, but we just really isn't a whole lot of point in trying to chase him right now. The middle part of the race here, we're just kind of put piles behind him. Uh, we got to tighten the car up just a little bit more. We did both ways. We started out a little tight. Now we're a little on the loose side. So we're just going to try to get him zeroed in here later on. Yeah, Richard Childress just walked through here with a wrench. They're getting ready on the next stop. They're going to change the chassis a little bit on Earnhardt. Try to make him a little faster so we can maybe catch up with Jeff Bodine. Dale Earnhardt currently running in fourth position behind Mark Martin, Sterling Marlin, and Jeff Bodine as 125 laps have been completed. Again, we're looking for the halfway challenge at lap number 184. And there is the number uh, six car of Mark Martin putting a lap on Jack Pennington. Right in front of him, for 94, Sterling Marlin running in second place. Sterling Marlin trailing Jeff Bodine. And we'll try to show you the interval that uh, is between the first and second place cars. And there you can see it is almost a uh, full straightaway now separating at least half a straightaway separating first and second position showed. So Jeff Bodine, who was the leader of uh, the pole sitter, rather, for this race, finds himself as a leader and going for $15,200 in Unical bonus money. Bob, we mentioned that there are 20 cars in the lead lap. For Jeff Bodine leading second, Sterling Marlin. Third is Mark Martin. Fourth, Dale Earnhardt. Bill Elliott has moved up to fifth. In sixth place is Morgan Shepard. Seth, seventh now has dropped back. Rick Wilson, eighth, Davey Allison, Harry Gant is ninth, and in tenth place is Michael Walter. Brett Bodine is 11th, Ricky Rudd 12th, Ken Slater 13th, Darren Walter is 14th, Dick Trickle is 15th, Bobby Hillen 16th, Terry Labonte 17th, Rob Moroso 18th, Jimmy Spencer 19th, and Richard Petty the 20th place car. And those 20 cars are still on the lead lap with Jeff Bodine. We're glad you could join us on this beautiful Sunday afternoon from Darlington, South Carolina. Back at Darlington, Bob Jenkins, Ned Jarrett, Benny Parsons, Jerry Punch, and Dick Burkert bringing you live coverage of the Trans-South 500 Winston Cup race. The last Ford win here was in 1985 when Bill Elliott did, and currently a Ford driven by Jeff Bodine is the leader of our race. 131 laps completed. The halfway point is 184. Here is the number nine car of Bill Elliott, the 15 of Morgan Shepard, and now we see fifth and sixth position here as Bill Elliott is in the ninth place. Let's go to Dick Bergman, who's with the crew chief on Elliott's car. Crew chief is Mike Bean. Mike, you started all the way back in 17th. Didn't give yourself much chance today, but here you are in fifth. What have you done to get this thing running so well? Well, this morning, I changed all the shocks and springs, you know, and changed the weight around a little bit. You know, yesterday evening, we were terrible. Yeah, you know, I mean, we was ready to shoot ourselves, you know. We didn't get a lot of sleep last night because we tried to think of everything in the world to do. So I come in this morning and I told Bill, I said, you know, we don't have nothing to lose and everything to gain. We gambled on it, you know. I pretty much just changed everything. We've been conservative all year, you know. And that wasn't getting us nowhere. This is probably Rex Rodney and all the boys in 
shop. They worked real hard getting here with this car. After we got beat so bad at Atlanta, you know, we just said, heck, we're going to get it done. So uh, I think we're in pretty good shape. Bill, he, he hasn't said nothing, so I think he's okay. This is another team struggling with a front steer car that they're not terribly used to. Elliott has done extremely well here at Darlington, only finishing out of the top 10 twice in his entire career. Dick, I think he made a good, smart move while you were talking to Mike Beam. He just moved over to the inside and let Morgan Shepard and Davey Allison go around. He said, this is not the point of the race that I want to be out here racing hard, these guys. He can keep up with them, so he said, I'm just going to let them go ahead and run their pace, and I'll run mine. Boy, look at this battle for a second. It has really tightened up, and three cars are in contention for that second position. On the left is the 94 of Sterling Marlin. Then comes the red maroon car of Mark Martin, and then the black number three of Dale Earnhardt. Second, third, and fourth. These guys are chasing down Jeff Bodine, the leader. Let's go to Jerry Punch, who's with Steve Meal. Well, Steve is watching his driver, Mark Martin, who's getting a little quicker and a little quicker. Steve, you guys will keep working on the chassis. What have you been doing to the car? We started real tight. We like to make sure Mark's got these radial tires up under him real good. And you know, everything's working fine. We're just a little bit too tight. So as the race goes on, he'll get the feeling better. We're steady, steady, loosening them up. So as we go on, we should run faster. Maybe we'll have something for him. That 11 is awful sound right now. They're pretty pleased right now. Mark continues to climb. He was fifth, fourth, and now he's running third, trying to work over the Sterling Marlin car. Right on Sterling, Marlin's bumper now looks to the high side of the racetrack between turns one and two, but stays in that third position behind Sterling Marlin. You know, fellas, we never did answer Jerry's question about uh, the car number 94. Steve Lloyd, the crew chief on it, said that they were running a little higher gear than some of the others, and Jerry asked the question, what will that do as the race goes on and the track gets a little bit slicker? Benny, I think that it'll help it. Now, I always ran a little higher gear here than most other people. Of course, I only had one win on this racetrack, but uh, as the track got slicker, the high gear helped. Well, it will help, and if he has to move up on the racetrack, ooh, they oh. almost touched, or did they touch? Trying, as Mark Martin, trying to get by Sterling. If Sterling has to move up on the racetrack, it will help him because he certainly will not turn too many RPM. When he runs a little less gear, that means he's not turning quite the RPM that his competitor did. You know, how would they know his competitors are? How would they know that? Do they know what everybody else is running for a gear you suppose? I don't know. I expect that's a guess. While we watch second, third, and fourth position here, we'll tell you that Davey Allison has moved into fifth. Look at Earnhardt right up against the wall. stabilized now for second, third, and fourth since Mark Martin attempted that pass. So Marlin remains in second, Mark Martin in third, Dale Earnhardt in fourth, Davey Allison in fifth position, and there is the leader of the Trans-South 500 at the moment, Jeff Bodine. Back with more live action after this. But the driver who is on the move is Davey Allison in car number 28. There you can see that the three car of Earnhardt has moved into second. Third is Sterling Marlin. Or make that the fourth is Sterling Marlin. And fifth is Davey Allison. Second place belongs to Mark Martin. Okay, I was going to tell you Mark Martin is in second place. That's all I want to do. Okay. And here's Davey Allison going to try to go on by on the outside as Sterling Marlin moves to the inside of the track. There's Morgan Shepard in car number 15. He might try to make the pass, too. Boy, that takes a lot of nerve to drive up on the outside of someone coming off the second corner because you wonder, does he know that I'm here? Is he sure, surely he knows I'm here, but most of the time he don't know you're there. I believe the handle's gone away on Sterling Marlin's car a little bit. While we were in commercial, we did have a shuffle of positions, and here's how it happened. Now, remember, Sterling was in second when we went away from commercial, and here's how Mark Martin got around, and also how Dale Earnhardt was able to pass Sterling Marlin. This is coming off the second corner, and all day we've been watching the 94 car run right on the bottom of the racetrack in one and two. He was high that time and not getting a good grip at all. Mark Martin got by, and he had the slow going in turn three, so Earnhardt got the position and took third away, third away from him. Davey Allison has had a fine run here. Now, remember, this guy has finished second and third in the last two Trans-South 500. Let's go down and talk to uh, Robert Yates. 
Well, Robert Gates is the car owner, he's the motor builder, he's just about everything. He's the crew chief on this team. Now, you guys were a lap down early as a result of that pit stop. Here you are all the way back up in the top five. Can you do anything with Bodine? Well, uh, we're, we're a couple tenths or two or three tenths quicker than he is right now, and uh, we don't know how hard he's running because he is out front. We're running him down, the car's running real good, and I uh, hope this is uh, next to how much we're done for to hang together here one time. How hard are you running? Uh, real good. <laughs> he's not going to tell us how hard he's running, but I bet he's running real hard. Boy, we got some tight action on the racetrack. Morgan Shepard and Sterling Marlin almost came together. While we watched this action on the track, the number 20 car of Rob Moroso had a brush with a second turn wall. He came in and changed tires while running at 16th, and Moroso is back out on the racetrack. He said they get was close action. I do believe they got together over there. Yeah, well. I think they did too. I think they touched. see Bill Elliott back pulled back up on the back of Morgan Shepard. I would say that a little bit ago when Bill Elliott moved over, that those guys had gotten up behind him and got his car loose and moved up so close to him they took the air off and his car. His car was just extremely loose, so he had to back off. Then his tires too long and let those fellows go. Let's uh, go back and take a look at it in replay once again, and we'll maybe be able to determine whether or not they did touch. We'll get to that just as soon as we can. Shepard will try the outside again, perhaps. Well, we saw Mark Martin do that a little bit earlier, and now it's going to work for him. A Sterling gives him running room, moves to the inside, and makes Shepard go by. So now Morgan Shepard moves into fifth spot. Here is the replay, and let's see whether or not they got together. Morgan comes up alongside of him, but the car goes up the racetrack. And I don't think they did. They're awfully close. Well, Sterling Marlin losing positions. Let's go to uh, Dick Bergeron and uh, find out what might be the problem, Dick. I mean, it's crew chief Steve Lloyd. Steve, what's going on? You're drifting back. Well, he's complaining about the car's a little bit loose right now. We were running a lower groove earlier in the race. Looks like he's heated the tires up to the pit here in about... 15, 16 last, but the fresh tires on it just fall a little bit. We should be honest. There's a lot of guys that are complaining that they're loose. Earnhardt saying he's loose. Walter saying he's loose all the down pit road. They don't like to make a pit stop, tighten the cars up a little bit. And here is uh, Davy Allison and Mark Martin as they battle for second spot. Davy Allison has just taken that spot away from Mark Martin. Davy continues his march towards the front. No, this is probably the longest green flag run that we have had here this afternoon, and that's one reason that they're complaining about the cars getting loose because they're they are uh, slipping and sliding a little bit more now. The cars are heated up now. About 10 laps ago, Jeff Bodine had a little over a seven second lead on the car number 94 that was running second at that time. Right now, Davey Allison has moved into second place. He is only six seconds behind. So Robert Yates says that he has uh, gained on it. That was quite a serial we saw there. He dropped back clear to 37th position just after the start of the race, and now he is back up to second. So Davey Allison is certainly having a good run here this afternoon, and he's trying to start a good season. He has finished no better than 13th in any event so far this year. And of course, got uh, some relief help in the race at Rockingham because of a fading spell. Davy Allison running in second position at the moment. Now let's go back and take a look at the incident that occurred between Ernie Irvin and Jeff Bodine a while ago. Irvin off of corner number four, losing control. And he just spins the car, and luckily he's able to lock the brakes up and no one hits him. But, guys, you know, this reminds me so much of my first few years at Darlington Raceway. What? Yeah. I mean, I came here in 1970 for my first visit. I finished fifth. I spun out more times than that. <laughs> I hit everything that moved, and some things didn't move like a wall. You remember, that was a crash. That was the year that Richard Petty had the big crash turn off turn four. Oh, yeah. I come up. I'm an ARCA driver. I'm on a cut and since it's crash. I come off the corner. I'm rubbernecking the wreck, right? Wow, what a wreck. I'm going to run in the back of him, the great. You were watching Richard wreck, and yeah. you did yeah. 
I can also remember you starting on the pole in the. Oh, uh, come on now. And I was so proud of you. You'd done some races for us, and I thought, boy, Benny's going to win this race. And you got to the second corner, and it was all over. But <laughs> didn't make it through the first corner on the first lap. Right. Well, Benny, since you admitted some of those yeah, things here, okay, you know, man. we've all had our times <laughs> here at Darlington. In 1964, I only spun out twice on the first lap. You spun out twice on the first yeah, in going one in, lap? Yeah, going into the first turn. <laughs> got hit. No, I got hit by somebody else, so of course I didn't just lose it. Oh, right. Right? Got her squared away and took off down into turn three. Got hit by the same man. <laughs> spun out again in turn three. Finished fourth in the race, though. <laughs> There is Jeff Bodine, who is having no problems at the moment, leading this race over Davey Allison and Mark Martin. Good crowd on hand here in Darlington and beautiful weather. We'll be right back. And normally at this race, a lot of them need front and rear clips when they leave, but it's been fairly safe so far. Just the big crash down in turn one earlier. Yeah, pretty clean race. Jeff Bodine continues to lead this event. However, it is Davey Allison who is now in second and beginning to close in just a little, clicking off every lap just a little bit more. We're on lap number 160 at lap 184, just 24 laps from now. We will be at the halfway point. The driver who leads that time will win $10,000, and you can win a Pontiac Grand Prix. You still register to win by dialing 1-900-246. 0101. That's 1-900-246-0101. It'll cost you 95 cents to win, and you must be 18 to participate. If you get called back after the halfway point and you know who was the leader at that point, you will win a Pontiac Grand Prix. If you don't know who was leading at that point, then you will receive an award of $500 in cash. And we're going to see some pit stops here before too long, guys. It won't be too long before we start making green flag pit stops. And boy, let me tell you, you talk about a driver coming in and out of the pits, that's going to make a big difference on track position. Look at how close Davey Allison is to the leader, Jeff Bodine. He has really moved in and now is within just a second or two. Yeah, he has really moved in on him, no question about it. Now Davey's sort of got to block in some traffic back there that will slow him down a little bit. Now he begins to get clear of that traffic. That gave Jeff Bodine a little bit of running room here is uh, Neil Bonnie coming into the pits. Alan Kowick, his uh, crew is out on pit road thinking he's coming in very shortly, so green flag pit stops are coming up. Neil not among those in the lead lap. He's being shown in 22nd position, one lap down. The crew going to work on that car. Two cans of fuel going in and rubber being changed on the right side. He'll only take a two-tire change, and Neil Bonnet moves back out. However, we do get an indication from that that before long, everybody else is going to be coming in for some fresh tires and fuel. Rusty Wallace was in just a couple of laps ago. Rusty also running at least one lap down. He was involved in an early crash. There is Bodine. Boy, let's that car drift up high on the racetrack, up against that wall and turns one and two. And there is how close Davey Allison is. And you mentioned, Ned, that that little uh, problem he ran into some traffic a lap ago slowed him down, but now he has made up that uh, advantage, disadvantage in just this uh, this lap itself. Yeah, he's picking up uh, a good half a second a lap. Alan Kowicki is in the pit area. Dick Bergman is there. Well, this is a scheduled pit stop. It's going to be a four-tire change. Up and down pit road, everybody's looking to see whether they're going to be four or two tire stops. They'll take four tires if they need to go a lot faster on the racetrack. They'll take two if they don't. Robert Yates just stuck two fingers in the ears of his guys. They may change their mind, but Wiki's guys for sure are going to take four. They're on the left side right now. Paul Ends is over the wall, getting ready to send him off. No, Wiki's left front is not yet on. Slow stop for Alan Wiki, trouble with the left front. But he's back out there now, and he goes two laps down. He was one lap down in 21st position when he came in for the serve. Here comes Dale Earnhardt. Is that Earnhardt coming into the pits? Yes, it is, man. So Dale Earnhardt, who was running in fifth position, now heads for his pit area. Kirk Shelmerdine, Richard Childress crew go to work on that car right here in front of us. Sterling Marlin also coming in, as is Ken Schrader. Green flag pit stops being made. Right side rubber going on. The Goodrich Chevrolet number three by Dale Earnhardt. As you can see, Schrader pitted behind. And now they go to the left side on 
Dale Earnhardt, and they are making a chassis adjustment on the Earnhardt car. Yes, and they made a chassis adjustment on Alan Kowicki's car. We'll see quite a bit of that with the radial tires. They used to do those adjustments with tire stagger. Here's Sterling Marlin in the pits getting a four-tire change. That's Kenny Schrader at the top of your screen as Earnhardt goes out. But uh, they can't make the ch chassis changes by tire stagger now with the radials. They have to do it with the screw jacks. Sterling Marlin roars back out into competition. Davey Allison, the second place runner, is making his pit stop. He's on pit road. And Morgan Shepard is going to follow him in. Let's see what happens during Davey Allison's pit stop. He brings the Haviland Ford to a stop, and Dick Bergman is there to call it. Boy, what a run he's had this afternoon. From the lap down all the way to second position. 1987, this kid busted the wall down on fire. 88, he was third last year. He was second. There's only one place to go. This pit stop is going to be a four-tire change. They do not touch the chassis. Obviously, Allison happy with the way the chassis is. One can is in. Second one is going in the car, working on the left side tires now. Everybody watching everybody else. There he goes. Nice, clean pit stop for Robert Gates and the crew as Davey Allison goes back out. And here's Mark Martin down off the jacks and back in competition to the Jack Roush Folgers number six Ford. Michael Waltrip pulls out of the pits at number 30. The number five car of Ricky Rudd is still on pit road, and they're looking for a stop by the number 11 car of uh, Jeff Bodine. Here's Harry Gant coming in for his scheduled service. And the number 33 car, Brett Bodine, is on pit road. Here comes and now the we're watching car. for Jeff Bodine. Indeed, here comes the leader, Jeff Bodine, for a pit stop. And here's Jerry Punch. Budweiser crew having four sticker tires here on the wall. Bodine plays the car, turns hard left. Jams on the brakes and Tim Brewer goes to work on the right front of the car. Mike Hill changing the right rear. Pete Ryan, Jack under the right side of the car. They clean the windshield. Henry Benfield, one can of gas. He swings the can across the wall. Second can of gas going in. They scamper around the left side of the car. That was Brent Bonin's car. You heard some roaring by down pit road. Left front, now left rear tire is on. He is down and away. 20.8 seconds. Another great pit stop for the Bud Watcher crew. Let's go up to Dick Bergman in the Walter pit. Now we're watching Walter make his pit stop, and it's a good thing he is all afternoon. He's been radioing Jeff Hammond saying, boy, this car is a terror to drive. He is really having a tough time with it. Hammond just keeps telling him, hang in there. I know you can do it. Walter says, maybe I'm going to hit something, Walt. And Hammond says, no, you're not. So there he goes, and all they did to that car was change four tires. No edge change for Walter. Well, Darrell Walter has stayed on the lead lap all afternoon. He was 15th before coming in for the pit stop. And now just about everybody who was in the lead lap has been in for service. Excepting Bill Elliott. I don't think he has been in or Rick Wilson. Elliott should be coming in before too long. The back pit shows that Rick Wilson is in. So is Jack Pennington in car number 47. Chad Little, the barbecue uh, bullseye barbecue sauce machine, also now pulling in for his pit stop in car number 19. That's Rick Wilson behind. He was running in second place before he made that pit stop as a result of the others hitting out in front. We were looking at the crew cam now. They work on Kyle Petty's Pete Pontiac. Being carried by the catch cam man on the Kyle Petty car. Fuel going in. Tires being changed. Bill Elliott, the leader of the race, is slowing down in turn number four, and he comes on pit road. There you can see the car full of fuel. Kyle Petty back out on the racetrack. Bill Elliott is in. Dick Berkman is there. And Brother Ernie with the sideboard. Now, before this race, Bill Elliott had only led three laps in 1990. Very untraditional for Bill Elliott. He was out of it in Atlanta. What a wonderful run he's had this afternoon from 17th position all the way up to the lead. But right now, the pack is rolling by as Elliott takes his pit stop. He's got a single can of fuel in, second one on the way in, working on the left side tires, cleaning off the grill at the same time. Hurried action, good stop. Three for Bill Elliott. Not a great stop, but a good one. Elliott back out on the racetrack at lap number 173. We're only 11 laps from the halfway point, and the lead goes back to Jeff Bodine in car number 11. There he is. Right in front of him is Terry Labonte. We're at the Trans South 500 at Darlington, South Carolina, and we'll be back in a moment. In the Trans South 500 with a helmet camera mounted on the side of his helmet. Davey Allison just got into the wall in corner number four. The second place car loses positions and he may have damaged that car because it is slowing drastically. 
He takes the car down off the banking, but a tough break for Davy Allison, who was running in second. Here it is. Let's see. He slips up into the wall, and right there, it looks like he clips it and then back into it a little bit more. He does keep the car going in a forward position, but how much damage did he do to it? Did he knock sheet metal in on the tires? Time will tell. Here he comes. He's coming in the pits now to assess the damage. Dick Bergman is there. Dick? Well, this is a tough break. These guys really had a shot at it. They still may have a shot at it. Let's not forget that they have overcome adversity before. Davey Allison in the pits now. They're certainly going to change the right side tires. Spoiler damage underneath the car. But the key question is, will they be out of here before Jeff Bodine goes by? Allison is still in the pits. It looks like all they're doing is those right side tires. That's it. Bodine passes him. Davey Allison has gone down a lap of 15.1. Car spinning on the back stretch. Caution is out. 57 car of Jimmy Spencer in trouble on the back stretch, and the yellow flag comes out for the fifth time this afternoon, and it's been a long time since we had one. Here you can see Spencer's car to the inside of the racetrack against the inside wall separating the track from the pit area, and now he begins to uh, pull away. Now here is Alan Kowicki trying to get a lap back on the leader, Jeff Bodine, but Jeff is going to hold him off as they cross the track. So we've had Davey Allison in trouble here in the last couple of laps and also Jimmy Spencer. There is Spencer's car limping to the pit area after a problem over off of corner number two. Well, for the fifth time this afternoon, there is a busy pit road as just about all the leaders have come in for more service. Let's go to Dick Bergman, who's in Davey Allison's pit. Well, they think they may have an auto alignment front end. That should be no surprise. Right now, they've got tapes on the front and the back of both front tires. And what they're going to try to do is adjust that front end into proper alignment. So the tires are towed somewhere near where they're supposed to be. This is a pretty good way of doing it. It's a little bit faster than the stringing method, a little bit more modern. Boy, what a tough break. Davey apparently just was trying too hard. Got in the fourth corner. They said nothing broke in the car. Nothing failed. He just got into it. Davey sitting silent on pit road. Virtually everybody. Everybody else is left. The only guy on here right now is Kyle Petty and Davey Allison. They've adjusted the front end of the car now. He's going to pull out of fuel and they send them off. And uh, Davey back out. We might mention that Jeff Bodine did not pit. Now here is the replay of the incident involving Jimmy Spencer from Harry Kent's vantage point, and he just missed him. <laughs> he just he was waiting to see which way Jimmy was going to go, and he had he was going to make his decision. All of a sudden, he had to make a decision. <laughs> Luckily, it was the correct one. Let's go to uh, Jerry Punch, who's with uh, Bodine's crew chief. We're with Tim Brewer here in the pits, and uh, Timmy, as important as thicker tires are here, you opted not to come back in. I guess you felt the car is pretty, about as good as you're going to get it? Well, you know, there's $10,000 oh. uh, for halfway later. If we <laughs> stop right now, we get in a situation just like we were in Atlanta a couple weeks ago. Regardless, we've got four tires. This place is awful treacherous to pass on. I'll take my chances with 10 lap tires on the front row and, you know, run for the 10,000. But, you know, it's one of those situations. Those guys back there with those fresh tires, you know, they're sitting there with about six cars in between us and them, so I hope that's enough push. Well, Gillette right guard halfway challenge here having a big impact already at Darlington. And Junior Johnson knows how to balance a checkbook, and $10,000 would certainly help him. Well, when they come around this time, it'll be the halfway point, but the rules say the money is paid five laps after the green flies. Good afternoon here at the Trans-South 500, Darlington International Raceway because of an incident coming off of corner number two involving Jimmy Spencer. Just before that, Davey Allison got into the wall in corner number four, and he has been making pit stops since that time trying to get the problem corrected on the car and trying to get the toe in adjusted correctly here you can see the crew waiting on him to come by one more time we will show you what happened to Davey Allison as he moved through the third and fourth turns running all alone by himself and he just gets too high clips the wall on the outside stays against it for a little bit then as he comes off a of turn four he hits it again and that's the lick that perhaps yeah. did the most damage. That's the one that did the damage, I believe. And just after that, we had another caution. Jimmy Spencer out of turn number two. Here it is from Harry Gant's perspective. Oh, 
The old, the old helmet camera would have took a lift there, wouldn't it? Dick Bergeron and Davey Allison spin. Well, this is the fourth time Davey Allison has been in. The problem is toe out. In a front steer car, when it's towing out, boy, you've got some significant front end damage. So it's going to be quite the miracle if they can get Davey Allison back in this hunt again. He's already gone down one lap at this point, still sits here in the pits. Boy, what a tough break for this young man who may well have been on his way to his first win in 1990. Yeah, it was certainly the best performance that he has turned in all year and was really looking good. He was running in second position when the incident occurred. We are still under caution. We are past the halfway mark, but again, the money of the halfway challenge is not paid until the fifth lap of green, and we will be going back to green next time around. The leader of the race at the moment is Jeff Bodine, and second position belongs to Brett Bodine in car number 26. Third is Rick Wilson, fourth is Bill Elliott, and in fifth position is Mark Martin. You reckon uh, Jeff's going to let Brett have the $10,000? Not if he can help it. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> you got that right. <laughs> he says, uh, Brett, you're a little bit younger than I am. You'll have your opportunity along the way <laughs> to get your $10,000. Let me have this one. You notice that the pace car pulls off of the racetrack coming down the back stretch, and then uh, it gets the field as it uh, as they come down off of corner number two. So it is the responsibility of the leader of the race to bring it down at a safe pace. That is correct. He's the boss right now. And the fellow on the inside can't do anything about the pace. He has to follow the lead of the leader. That's the 11 car, the red car of Jeff Bodine. The eight car, Bobby Hill on the inside, has to follow his lead. And the crowd rises to its feet to watch the restart of the Trans South 500 on lap number 187. The green flag flies. We are back to racing once again. Now, five laps from right now, if we stay under green, we'll pay $10,000 to the leader of the event. And if you know who it is and if you have registered, you may be eligible to win a Pontiac Grand Prix within the uh, next couple of hours. Brother move out pretty good there on that race car. The halfway money will be paid on lap 192 if we stay green. And there is Jeff Bodine stretching out the advantage over his brother. Brett Bodine certainly having the best run of the year since he joined the Kenny Bernstein Quaker State team. Well, there is no question about that. Bobby Hillen is in 15th position, one lap down in that Snickers-sponsored car number eight. Tell you what, there's several cars having a great run today that hadn't had a lot to cheer about this year. Rick Wilson, the guy running third now. That yellow car has got a super run there. As I said, that looks like he had a problem. Well, no, I guess he just slowed down momentarily. Looks like he's back up to speed now. There is Rick Wilson, car number 75, the Dinnerbell Meets car. Third place, fourth on the racetrack behind the lap car of Bobby Hillen. Dale Earnhardt, it is not unexpected, is on the move once again as he threads his way through traffic and tries to get back up into a competitive situation. He restarted the race in eighth position. And now in just two more laps, the leader will get $10,000. The number 15 car of Morgan Shepard, the 94 of Sterling Marlin, and the 30 car of Michael Waltrip are all in the same lap and fighting for position. The 21 car of Neil Bonnet is not on the lead lap. Dick Burke with a comment on Morgan Shepard. Well, this is Morgan Shepard's best run ever this deep into a season to be running in second position in the points. And you know, racing philosophy says never change more than one thing at a single time. This team, however, changed all their cars. They went from rear steer to front steer. And they also changed their driver. So that's two major things that they changed over the course of the winter. But it's really working. And it's working in a way that's different than many of the other teams. Morgan doesn't come in and tell these guys it's pushing, it's loose. He comes in and says, I want 25 pounds more spring in the right front. Greg Moore says, every time we do what he says to us, it runs better. It's running well now. We're coming up to the halfway point. Indeed it is. The halfway challenge money being paid right there to the leader, Jeff Bodine. Jeff Bodine is the leader of the halfway point. 
and is the driver that you need to know if you are called in the next hour and have registered to win that Pontiac Grand Prix. Jeff Bodine from Chemung, New York, number 11, is the leader of the race. Here's the number 75 car and the six car of Mark Martin battling for position. And there is Ernie Irvin also right there. Of course, Ernie lost several laps earlier when he uh, had a problem, but he apparently that car is running very well. And here comes Dale Earnhardt to the inside of the racetrack as he tries to move around Rick Wilson, and he does so going into turn one. Not only Earnhardt, but also Morgan Shepard, Sterling Marlin, Bill Elliott. Great group of cars. We watch from out the back windshield of Ernie Irvin's Kodak Bill Oldsmobile. Shepard in fifth, sixth, Rick Wilson, seventh position is Sterling Marlin, and eighth is Bill Elliott. Ninth place would be Michael Walker, tenth place Ken Schrader, and eleventh, Ricky Rudd, Mary Camp running twelfth. Thirteenth would be Dick Trickle, and fourteenth is Darrell Waltrip, and those are the only cars on the lead lap. 14 on the lead lap, just past the halfway mark. Rick Sterling. Wilson trying to hold off the seven foot 94 of Sterling Marlin and the number nine of Bill Elliott. Six, seventh, and eight. And then right behind Bill Elliott is the number 30 car, the number 25, I should say, of. Ken Schrader, and then Michael Waltrip, followed by Ricky Rudd and Harry Gann. And those cars are running nose to tail, and they all are running for position. As we watch from uh, Harry Gann's helmet cam, we can see some uh, damage on uh, Ricky Rudd's back bumper. Looks like he'd been tagged once or twice. Well, he was tagged in that early, early spin with uh, Kyle Petty when he and Earnhardt tangled early in the race. As a matter of fact, what you see on the left rear of the five car is where Rusty Wallace got all this damage. He tore off the right front of this car, hit in Ricky Rudd's over there. So Harry Gann moves to 11th position as he's able to go around the number five car of Ricky Rudd. The lead continuing to be held by Jeff Bodine at the Grand South 500 in Darlington. Back after these messages. Parsons, Dick Corcoran, and Jerry Punch back at Darlington International Raceway in South Carolina for the Trans South 500. We are watching the battle for fourth place. Earnhardt, Morgan Shepard, and Sterling Marlin. You think this is good? Well, just a few laps ago, it was even better than this. They're trying to move around Bobby Hill in the left car, car number eight. Earnhardt tries to take advantage of that situation. Morgan Shepard going on the outside, Earnhardt going on the inside, and who's coming out ahead? Earnhardt. <laughs> That's how he took over third position, and he continues to run there, trailed by Morgan Shepard and Sterling Marlin. Well, just a lap ago, Morgan Shepard tried to get alongside Dale Earnhardt going in turn one. Let's see if he can get off the fourth corner this time to make a move. Run this time. They run single file. That yellow car trailing is Rick Wilson. He's on the lead lap. And look at Bill Elliott, who has lost some positions recently. Now we see Mark Martin beginning to challenge Brett Bodine and, in fact, take away second position from Brett Bodine. You just don't know how close that was to a crash. I mean, we're talking about a millimeter. The number four car of Ernie Irvin that we are riding with right now is 10 laps down. Remember, he had a crash in turn four earlier in the race and spent several laps in the pit area trying to get the problem on the car corrected. But the car has been running well since then. Yeah, it was running well before then, and, and since he came back out, it's run very well. We have a spin off of corner number two. It is Rick Wilson. Car. Rick Wilson. Yeah, that's what I thought. Rick Wilson has spun coming off the second quarter, corner, and his car is now stalled to the inside of the racetrack. Now he gets it going once again. This will, however, bring out our 
sixth caution flag of the afternoon. Rick Wilson, who was running in seventh position, causes a caution flag. Well, let's take a look now at our Western Auto race recap. And first of all, tell you that the battle for the mechanic of the year, one is chosen at the end of every race, and then an honor to the winner at the end of the year. And the point standings right now show us that Gary Nelson is leading with Robin Pemberton second, Tim Brewer third, Steve Loy fourth, and Donnie Wingo fifth in the mechanic of the year standings presented by Western Auto. All right, Gary Nelson is the crew chief. Oh, we need to say a graphic again, but you wonder who some of those crew chiefs are. Gary Nelson is the crew chief for Kyle Petty. Petty. The leader of the race, uh, Jeff Bodine, has led 148 of the 200 laps. Average speed, 129.3. We've had six leaders and nine lead changes. Five caution periods for 21 laps. 14 cars currently on the lead lap. And there is a lot of action on pit road, as just about all of the leaders have come in for more service during this caution period. Here's Dale Earnhardt in for service, and Dick Bergren is there. Well, the last time he came in for service, they put about nine rounds of bite in the car, and that helped a whole lot. This time, they're putting no bite in, but boy, they're having trouble with a left rear tire. They haven't quite gotten it on. Morgan Shepard, who he's battling with, is already out ahead of Earnhardt. Earnhardt says the car is a little better, but he's going to have to pass Morgan Shepard. He's been having trouble with him a bunch this afternoon. We're on the crew cam as the catch can man on Kyle Petty's car. There goes Kyle back out onto the racetrack. We have a tire that has disintegrated here on the main straightaway. There you can see it. It's uh, come off of one car. I'm not sure which one. I think it was Rick, Rick Wilson. Wilson's car, yeah, who was the reason for this caution period spinning off of corner number two. Back right after this. From the track, too tough to tame. Darlington International Raceway in South Carolina. 208 laps out of 367 completed here in the top 10. Ken Schrader currently shown in the lead under yellow. Jeff Bodine is second, Mark Martin third, Brett Bodine fourth, and Sterling Marlin is running in fifth position. Six through ten, Morgan Shepard, Dale Earnhardt, Michael Waldrop, Bill Elliott, and Ricky Rudd. We are under caution, and while we have the opportunity, we'll take another break and be right back to Darlington International. The field is accelerating, coming off of corner number four, and we are going back to green. Race conditions once again on Darlington International Raceway. 209 laps completed. The leader is Ken Schrader. Second position is Jeff Bodine. The number four car once again, Ernie Urban not on the lead lap. He's trying to get one of his 10 laps and he has lost back. And there is Jeff Bodine who has dominated most of this race, currently finding himself in second position to Ken Schrader. Wow, Schrader is just not backing up. Those two cars have run a complete lap side by side and they go off down. Oh, the three of them. Talk about side by side. Three of press going into turn one and they all survive. Meanwhile, these guys are still side by side. This is a lap and a half. Ernie Don't Urban trying to battle back and get one more lap. Uh oh, Ooh, he's loose again. Here and take a with him. Bodine's going to be involved, I believe. Several cars are going to get tangled up in this mess. The track is going to be Jeff completely it blocked. And so did Earnhardt. Earnhardt got through unscathed, I believe. But we have a mess down off of corner number four. The racetrack is almost blocked. It was blocked at one point time. And there is Ernie Irvin. As his car... Wow, it's a mess this time. It is badly, badly damaged. The driver compartment, however, stayed intact. You can see that uh, Ernie is in perfect condition. Just, I'm sure, very, very disappointed with the way that his day has gone. The second time this afternoon that he has lost it coming off of corner number four, or at least had a problem coming off of corner number four. Rick Wilson's number 75 car in the 52 machine of of uh, Jimmy Means involved, the number 11 car of Jeff Bodine is on pit road. And he does have some damage to the left yeah. rear of the automobile. They're looking at the car, seeing what they have to do. I don't know if it is severe or not. Boy, it's a wonder that just about everybody wasn't taken out in that because it, of course, was at the head of the field. Well, that, yeah, and coming off a of turn four where you don't have a great deal of control. Let's go to Dick Bergeron. 
Well, Ken Schrader sure had a close one on that deal. He's got damage on the right front corner. He's got tire marks on the left side corner. Boy, he was right out sideways up in that turn. Lots and lots of cars coming down pit road with damage. Ricky Rudd is just coming down beside us now. A left front wheel, it's virtually completely stopped and sparking. Rob Barroso's car is badly damaged. There's still several cars up pit road. Boy, that was a bad, bad accident in terms of damaging some top quality equipment. There's a bit of a fire on pit road. It, it appears as if uh, some gasoline has ignited. It isn't going to be a real major problem because the uh, the fire at Dick, are you there? Yeah, I am, Bob. They were right on it as soon as that fire broke out. The only damage appears to be right on pit road itself, and they're directing the fire extinguishers to a little piece of rubber that apparently was burning. No major damage, at least that we can see. You know Bob, what? You know what happened, Dick? That you mentioned that tire was rubbing, and when it moved through that fuel that had come off one of the cars, it ignited it. Now let's go to uh, Jerry Punch, who's with Sterling Marlin. Sterling, you climbed down the car, and although you're a little bit out of breath and shaking, you seem to be okay. Yeah, it's you know it's a shame. Uh, you know, we just. We're flying there to start and, and finally got the car hooked back up and uh, just sitting there taking our time and uh, you know it looked like a full car. He's a little over his head and he broke a loop right there and you know, nobody else was there. Your car seemed to be really coming to you. You've been running the lower group, the lower lot part of the race. Did you feel comfortable that you were going to be able to get the car back up front? It was kind of Dale like Rockingham. The car worked real good low and uh, I tried to run high and it's loose but it was hooked right up on the bottom and you know sitting there just taking our time and uh, it was just shame. Snow cold, flying and had a good feeling about today, but it's all over now. Sterling Marlin out over here at Norton. Well, Sterling Marlin will have another day. Now we're going to replay this crash. We've got him from several angles, so sit back here for the next few minutes and watch what happened between Ernie Irvin and Ken Schrader, which involved a lot of other cars eventually. This had been going on for two laps. These guys had been side by side for two laps, and we've talked all day. This racetrack is tough. It's too tough to tame and you just can't do it. We see Ernie got a little bit sideways. He bumps Raider. They spin. There, Sterling Marlin runs in the back of the six car, and then he also hits the four car. Meanwhile, Jeff Bodine, they ran in the back of him, but he came through with not too much damage. Also, Morgan Shepard, Dale Earnhardt, Brett Bodine. That looks like Bobby Hillen. Somehow, Bodine, Earnhardt got through. Brett Bodine got through for the most part. Here it, it is from our speed shot just off of corner number four. There's just no place to go. These fellows have blocked the racetrack completely, but Jeff Bodine. Yeah, unscathed. So yep. is Morgan Shepard. The guy that took the real hard knock, it appeared, was uh, Sterling Marlin, the 94 car. Well, Ernie gets tagged pretty good there by Ricky Rudd and gets tagged again by somebody. Well, we got another angle. Once they get sideways again, and they touch, they and touch. they go. Man. There you can see car, uh, how uh, Sterling Marlin got hit pretty good there a couple of times. And now you thought that was spectacular. Watch this and listen to this. Got through okay. Now, this is from Ernie Irvin's car looking out back. And Jerry Punch is with Ernie Irvin. We might want to mention, Bob, that Jimmy Means and Rick Wilson both have walked by me here in the garage area and appear to be okay. A little bit upset, but okay. And let's talk to Ernie Irvin. Ernie, you took quite a lick out there. Uh, you first, are you all right? Yeah, sure am. You know, we had the Kodak films out there in Millsville running off the day today and uh, had a little bit of trouble and uh, trying to get one of our laps back that we were down and racing awful hard. And O'Kenny was racing me hard to keep me down a lap. And uh, you know, we had a lot to catch up, but we were going to give it all we had. You and Kenny are pretty good buddies that go way back. In fact, he had a lot to do with you getting your first Winston Cup ride at Richmond driving for uh, Mark Reno a few years back. So that's basically just uh, racing. It was just racing. You know, we're racing awful hard. Uh, we went into turn three a couple times side by side. You're not supposed to do that here. But, uh, you know, we, we had a lot of room. I got loose. It wasn't Kenny's fault. It was more mine than anybody's. Let me ask you, what happened early in the race when you had that loop out here in front of Bodine? Oh, I got in under underneath Jeff, and we had a little trouble with the right front earlier and uh, just got underneath him, and, uh, you know, we touched, and it just spun me. 
Well, that's Ernie Irvin out of it here at Darlington. We told you there'd be a scramble today here for the Trans-South 500, and they certainly have been scrambling here just past the halfway point. It's been all Bodine, but we'll see what happens when we come back. Stay tuned. Or after a multi-car crash that has eliminated several of our top contenders. And we will go back to show you once again what happened. Ernie Irvin on the bottom of the racetrack with Ken Schrader on the top side, and they spin off of corner four. They, did, they look like a, a silhouette or something, like they were ice dancing. <laughs> now look at Darrell Walter in that orange car come through there. Now watch it. Way down on the inside. Look at the car spinning in front. Then it gets in the, in the dark. Here he is coming now with the track completely blocked. Now watch it. Come right through there. Waits for him to separate down against the wall. Then turns right. <laughs> square right. Comes out through there and comes through that unscathed. <laughs> nice job by Daryl Waltrip who was uh, running 13th position and he finds himself now in fifth. Well, the cleanup is going to take some while, so we have a very uh, special feature that we would like uh, to show you as part of our ESPN telecast here this afternoon. Now, Darlington, to many of us, means uh, a yearly reacquaintance with a famous personality who lives not too far from Darlington International Raceway. So ESPN now takes you behind the wall and visits the home of this famous personality whose home is near Darlington International. Jerry Punch. Over the years, we have received literally thousands of letters. Well, maybe hundreds. Okay, we got four letters up at ESPN from you, the fans, asking us to follow up on the celebrity lifestyles of some of the personalities you meet on our weekly Speed World coverage. Today, we visit the home of an individual that has been a crowd pleaser at many racetracks over the years. He has sat on more poles than Bill Elliott, ridden more motorcycles than Kyle Petty, and barked at more good-looking girls than Michael Waltrip. Want a clue? He has four legs and stands only 18 inches tall. You guessed it, it's Flatnose. Yes, Flatnose, the tree climbing dog. Now, you may not think that's Flatnose under there, but he's actually hidden a little bit incognito, you might say, with his sunglasses and hat. And the reason is that when Flatnose goes out in public, he and his faithful companion, Barney Odom, he's recognized right away. Remember last year, Tom Cruise came to a couple of Winston Cup races. It was at Michigan and Watkins Glen. Walked around the pits all day and no one recognized him. But you let Flatnose go in the track over here at Darlington and boom. Right off the bat, people know who he is. I think it's the sunglasses maybe that gives it away. But let's pull them off, Barney, and get a good close look at uh, Dovesville, South Carolina's favorite son, Flat Nose, a tree climbing dog. Now, Barney, we talked to Flat Nose a couple of years ago on ESPN, and he was over at Darlington Raceway yeah. and, uh, and put on quite an exhibition of climbing a tree. He's been a yeah. tree climber for how long? Ever since. He's a year old for seven years. For seven years, he's yeah. been climbing trees, and we talked yeah. him over to the racetrack. He's a big race fan. Does he have any favorites, Barney? Well, he like old Charlie on Earnhardt's crew flat note. Cause every year I take him to the race at, at Darlington, Charlie, he's coming over there to see flat nose. It don't matter. He gonna see old flat nose. Not me and flat nose likes old Charlie. So Barney flat nose has been doing a lot of special things for children now. Yeah, I've been taking flat nose to a lot of schools, telling little children not to do drugs. You know, flat nose has got a gift that the Lord gave it. And the Lord intended for me to use it in the right way. And that's what I'm going to do. And I enjoy that. I enjoy them little children. And flat nose, he enjoys doing stuff like that, too. Well, since our last interview with flat nose, he's been ill. In fact, quite ill. Underwent a life-saving operation at my alma mater, NC State University. And Barney, when you took him to Raleigh up to NC State, what did they do to him? They shaved him. Oh, don't, don't say shaved. That's a touchy subject right now up in Raleigh. But what, what kind of operation did they give him? Well, they uh, shaved him and put a pacemaker in him. Put a pacemaker in yeah, him? Yeah, he's got a pacemaker now. But it, it done the job for Platinum. It, well, if they hadn't have put him in it, he probably wouldn't even be here today. They got some good doctors up there. So the doctors have cut back a little bit on his tree climbing. Although he still can climb, they've cut back. And now it's uh, his son, son of Flat Nose. And now his name is uh, Peeper. Peeper is the one that's known as Flat Nose Jr. Now Barney Odom is trying to teach Flat Nose a new skill. He's learning to speak. Say, I want you. Let me hear Let me hear 
For many years, Flat Nose has climbed trees on a daily basis, but now with the pacemaker inserted, his tree climbing days are limited. In fact, he'll have to be satisfied with using trees the way most dogs here in South Carolina use them. Folks, I'm talking about purely shade. Well, of course. <laughs> Punch, excellent job there. You know, uh, Flat Nose was the star of the uh, pre-race ceremonies here this morning, and uh, Barney did about 10 minutes of uh, comedy routines. He was pretty good, too. And uh, Flat Nose successfully climbed the tree again, Jerry, and uh, was the star of the pre-race activity. Did you think that really when you got into this business that you would uh, be doing a feature on Flat Nose and doing that kind of thing? It may be hard to believe, Bob, but that's the first tree climbing dog I've ever interviewed on national television. But uh, although I've worked at it for quite a few years, and it was a lot of fun. Barney Odom and Flat Nose, and he's got a number of dogs over there that are sons of and siblings of Flat Nose that uh, have been doing a lot for people. He takes them around to different schools. He says to, he tries to, to uh, tell kids about not doing drugs. Takes them over to the blind school up in North Carolina. So he's been doing a lot of great things. He's been in Japan. Uh, he climbed one of those little bitty banzai trees over in Japan a couple of years ago. <laughs> But uh, he's been on the Tonight Show with Johnny Carson. Yeah. But he's certainly quite a celebrity here in South Carolina. Well, thanks for the piece. We appreciate it. And uh, it's nice to see uh, that uh, he's doing OK. Well, the wall, there is the Darlington Stripe. You've heard so much about the Darlington Stripe. And there are several that have fallen victim to that just in the last few minutes. Here are the cars that were involved in that multi-car tangle coming off of corner number four. Rudd, Irvin, Moroso, Wilson, Bonnet, Mean, Schrader, Martin, Marlin and Waltrip. Now, not all of those cars are out of the race, but those are the ones that were involved in some way or another with the uh, crash off of turn four. You know, I was just, that's a 10 car crash. And I was thinking they normally, we've not been wrecking that many cars. There've been one car race, but yep. we're back to the old days. We are still under caution here at Darlington. So while we have the chance, we'll take another break and be back for more live coverage of the Trans South 500. Stay with us. Darlington and in one half lap will be going back to racing after a lengthy cleanup period because of a crash off of corner number four. Daryl Waltrip, we saw him thread his way through that crash and it's really helped him because before the crash he was 13th and as we restart the event he is in fifth position. The leader is going to be Morgan Shepard in car number 15. Second position is Dara, Dale Earnhardt. Third is Brett Bodine. Fourth is Harry Gant and fifth is Daryl Waltrip as the crowd once again rises to its feet and salutes as the drivers come down to take the green flag. Now the number 11 car of Jeff Bodine, which was leading, was involved somewhat in that crash. Morgan Shepard gets tagged a little bit there by Tommy Dillon and he was involved somewhat in that crash, has fallen back. They have had the trunk up on that car working in the, in the pit area. We'll see if the Budweiser Ford, driven by Jeff Bodine, can get back up front. We do have a new leader. There is Dale Earnhardt passing Morgan Shepard. Wow, he takes off. Morgan tries to come back on the inside. I don't think he's going to be able to make it. But that was Earnhardt and Morgan Shepard that got tangled up going into the just a moment ago. Just like in Atlanta a couple of weeks ago, it's Dale Earnhardt and Morgan Shepard at front. And by the way, these two are first and second in Winston Cup points as we head into this event, with Morgan Shepard trailing Dale Earnhardt by 58 in the Winston Cup battle. Bob, you mentioned Jeff Bodine, that he did make numerous pit stops during that long caution period. He still is in the lead lap, but he's in 11, or was in 11th place. 11 cars now being shown on the lead lap. And we're inside Dick Trickle's Phillip 66 car. The in-car camera showing us Ken Schrader just ahead. Now Schrader, of course, was involved in that wreck, but he's still in the lead lap. So is Dick Prickle. They're running in, what, sixth, seventh position. And Harry Gant in the Skull Bandit is watching uh, this action. This is the view that he has. It's our bumper cam. Harry watching this from his rear view mirror. Ken Schrader right behind him. Gant running fourth. Ken Schrader running in fifth. Didn't appear to do too much damage to Ken Schrader's car. He spun down out of the way of the oncoming traffic when yeah. the big crash happened. It, it looked like that he spun and Ernie Ernie got in the way of all the cars coming. All the cars hit Ernie and none of them could get to Ken Schrader's car. Dick Trickle has had a very good race in the Cale Yarborough car. That small break that we saw in the windshield there in the very first lap or the first few laps really hasn't grown much throughout the afternoon. I told you one more. Yeah, you were right. 
Oh, what in the world? <laughs> Perry Gant must have slowed dramatically. Dick Trickle will go in with Ken Schrader side by side. Now Schrader said, I've been out here, but I don't know if I want much more of that or not. That's for sure. Let's see if he tries racing Dick Trickle in the third corner like he did Ernie Irving. He remembers what happened not too many laps ago. He's going to let Dick Trickle go ahead. <laughs> this time he backed up. Let's go to Jerry Punch with a uh, report on Neil Bonnet. We've been waiting to give you a little bit of an update on Neil Bonnet, who was involved in that crash about 15 laps ago up in third corner. Neil was knocked unconscious inside the Sitco Ford, was taken here to the infield care center. Inside the infield care center, he is awakened now and talked to the doctors and talked to Leonard Wood and some of the crew. Now, he's awake and knows where he is, but for safety reasons, they feel he may have a little bit of a concussion. They're going to transfer him to McLeod Regional Hospital here in Florence for a computerized CAT scan. It's just simply precaution. No significant injuries have been diagnosed, but simply a precautionary move for Neil Bonnet. All right, thank you, Jerry. We will keep our fingers crossed and hope that nothing seriously uh, has occurred to Neil Bonnet involved in that crash in turn number four. Still seeing some great action. Now we're looking out from uh, the rear window of the 66 car as he continues to pass cars. Dick Trickle has moved all the way up to fifth spot. And Ken Schrader is still, he's just by Bobby Hill and he's on the back of his bumper. Michael yes. Walter just made an unscheduled pit stop. Yes, he did, and he was one of those 11 cars running in the lead lap. He was running ninth when he came in. Now he goes a lap down. You can see the battered Pontiac that he's driving out there. He was involved in that multi-car crash. Boy, I tell you, look at those uh, streamers there on the right rear of the race car. Are those for aerodynamics, I no, guess? That's 200-mile-an-hour tape that's only good for 100 miles an hour. <laughs> <laughs> well, he gets back up to speed, it appears. Now look at Bill Elliott in car number nine and the 17 of Darrell Waldrop. Bobby Hillen right there in the eight car and the 42 of Kyle Petty. Of course, Hillen one lap down, being shown uh, in the 13th position. Kyle Petty is two laps down, being shown in 15th position. And Alan Kowicki in car number seven is also two laps down. Jeff Bodine in number 11 who is beginning to come back. He had uh, of course some problems after that crash and Dick Bergeron perhaps you can tell us exactly what those problems were. The primary problem Bob Jenkins was the oil tank in the back of the car. You keep the engine oil in an aluminum tank near the left rear tire. That tank was fractured. Well, maybe Jerry Punch ought to be doing this piece because boy it sure was some surgery. They stuffed that thing full of rags and vice grips and they clamped it and they glued it. Now it's not leaking, they hope. Tim Brewer says their biggest problem is going to be weeding their way through all this traffic to get back up front. But the guy who started beside him on the front row today, Mark Martin, was also involved. His problems were far less severe. He just suffered a big right rear corner. Both of those cars should be okay and should be able to win their way back to the front and back to the competition for the win. All right, well, Jeff Bodine has picked up one position, passing Mark Martin, so Jeff is now ninth. Dale Earnhardt continues to lead Morgan Shepard. There they are, first and second. And Morgan looks to the inside. Will he mount a challenge? Well, let's go down to Jerry Punch for a comment on Dale Earnhardt. I am told in the Earnhardt pits they've done everything they know to try to tighten up that good race Chevrolet here at Darlington, but it will not work. The car just gets looser and looser and looser with every successive lap. Earnhardt is a great driver with a loose race car, but he may have his hands full right now to pull the Shepard right on his rear deck. Boy, he is. He is really putting the pressure on Dale Earnhardt. And there is Davey Allison, the third car there in line. Allison is one lap down, however, after running with the leaders for many laps. Davey Allison is now shown in 12th position, one lap down. We are live at Darlington International Raceway in South Carolina for the Trans-South 500. From the track they call Too Tough to Tame, Darlington International Raceway in South Carolina. We're live today for Winston Cup Racing, the Trans South 500. And we are on lap 239 with Dale Earnhardt from Kannapolis, North Carolina, leading over Morgan Shepard in car number 15. In third position, 
is the number 26 car of Brett Bodine. Fourth is Harry Gant, and in fifth position is the 66 of Dick Trickle. Morgan Shepard just a couple laps goes right on the bumper of Dale Earnhardt. He went down in turn one, got up and almost got in the wall. He might have just brushed the wall. I think he's kind of backed off, so I think I'll let Earnhardt's car get a little bit worse before I try to pass him again. Meanwhile, as we watch those cars that have dropped out of the race, Davey Allison seems to be hanging right with these guys, and if he could get his lap back, he could again be a contender. Yes, he could. He has come from one lap down already, and then he brushed the wall, got another lap down, and uh, is in position there perhaps to get that lap back if he could just move around those two cars. And again, a lot of these cars that have dropped out of the race, a result of that action accident out of turn number four. Now we'll take a look at those who are behind the wall, but not necessarily out of the race. Neil Bonnet, once again, is being checked over at a local hospital for a, a possible concussion. He was knocked unconscious during that accident up in turn number four. We're just taking to the hospital for precautionary measures. leading Morgan Shepard by three or four car lengths as Davey Allison, third in line there, shown at 11th spot, one lap down. Brent Bodine still running third. Harry Gant fourth and Dick Trickle fifth. Bill Elliott is running in sixth. Seventh is Ken Schrader, eighth. Daryl Walter, ninth is Mark Martin. And tenth is Jeff Bodine. And Davey Allison, the first car a lap down. Bobby Hillen, Michael Walton, and Richard Petty also a lap down. And two laps down is Kyle Petty, Alan Kowicki, and Mike Alexander in Bobby Allison's car. Three laps down, Terry Labonte, Chad Little, the 98 car of Butch Miller, Rob Moroso is, that's the cars that's three laps down. And we'll show you how they're running on the racetrack in our field summary as the leader is Dale Earnhardt in car number three. It has been basically a battle between him and Jeff Bodine so far in this race. And at the moment, Dale Earnhardt escaped that crash up in turn number four. And he is looking pretty good at the moment. Morgan Shepard, who finished second at Atlanta a couple of weekends ago, is chasing Dale Earnhardt. Right behind Morgan Shepard is Davey Allison, who has battled back from a couple of misfortunes this afternoon to find himself in 11th position, one lap down on the field. Then comes the number 26 car, driven by Brett Bodine. And boy, you just can't say enough about the performance that this guy has turned in so far today in the Quaker State Buick, owned by Kenny Bernstein. By far, the best run that they have had all year. And you can see there his Darlington finishes, 14th and 6th. Brett Bodine from Chemung, New York, currently running in third position. Fourth is Harry Gann, the defending champion of the Trans South 500, who himself has not been... Uh, up among the contenders today, but he has always been on the lead lap, and I don't think you can count him out before this day is over. And following him, Dick Trickle, who last year won the Winston Cup Rookie of the Year Award. The next car behind Dick Trickle is Bill Elliott, the Coors Motorcraft Ford. Bill this year had a miserable year. A little bit, he's got things going a little bit better today than he has previously in the year. Michael Walter, the next car, the Country Time. Maxwell House Pontiac, followed by his older brother, Daryl Walter, in the Tide Chevrolet. Going down the front right away. Michael has gone a lap down, being shown in 13th place. Here's Daryl Walter in the Tide Chevrolet, car number 17, being shown right now in the 8th position. Then Mark Martin in the Folgers Ford, he's running in ninth position. Meanwhile, let's go back up front just uh, for the moment as look at this. They're going to go three abreast into one. Well, they go two abreast. Now, Dale Earnhardt decides that you can have the lead, Morgan Shepard. And Shepard does lead this trio into the first and second corners. And we have a new leader, Morgan Shepard. It's pretty exciting stuff there, wasn't it, Bob? I'm glad we got that. <laughs> back there. We had to break away from our field summary there, but we showed you the pass for the lead. And we'll replay it from turn number four down the straightaway. Earnhardt got out a little bit wide and got the car a little bit out of shape, which gave Morgan Shepard the opportunity to get on the inside. Davey thought about going three abreast. He said, no, I've hit the wall once already today. Let me just fall back here and see what happens. Smart thinking. Morgan Shepard in the Motorcraft Ford has the lead. Dale Earnhardt now is in second position. Now we will resume our field summary. 
We told you about Daryl Walter. Here's the number six car driven by Mark Martin, currently shown in the ninth position. Mark Martin in car number six. And behind him would be the 42 car driven by Kyle Petty. And he is currently shown 15th, two laps down. Then comes Ken Schrader in the Kodak Chevrolet. We saw him just a moment ago spin with Ernie Irvin. Get by almost unscathed. Right behind Ken Schrader. The seven car of Alan Kowicki, the Xerox Ford. Alan spun earlier when Kyle and Dale Earnhardt got together. And we can see Alan hasn't had too much to cheer about this year either. The 11 car, Jeff Bodine, the Budweiser Ford, who dominated this race earlier on, involved in that accident. And he is the last car on the lead lap, currently running in the tenth position. The next car is Bobby Hillen in the Snickers Buick. Number eight, Bobby is in 12th position, one lap down, having a good run here today. And then comes the king, Richard Petty, seven-time NASCAR Winston Cup champion. He's only one lap down, running in the, he should be running in the 13th position, I believe. They're showing 14th, but he's moved up a couple of positions. And then comes Terry Labonte, who had a lot of smoke pouring from that race car a few laps ago, but they've apparently made corrections, and Terry Labonte now finds himself 18th, three laps down. There comes Mike Alexander and Bobby Allison's Ray Besties Buick. We can see Mike off to four starts. All the cars this year, there's no one except Earnhardt and Jeff Bodine who's had anything to brag about all year, just all trying to get it together. And, of course, Morgan Shepard has pretty well together also. Yeah, and excuse me. There's Chad Little, the Bulldog Barbecue Sauce Ford. Chad running a, a limited schedule this year. This is one of the 15 or 18 races he will run. Here's a guy, Rusty Wallace, the Miller Genuine Draft Pontiac. We haven't talked too much about Rusty today, but he was involved in that action earlier with Kyle Petty. Banged up the right front, knocked the front end out of alignment. He's had a day just simply. We see him with no hood on the automobile. He's trying to finish the race, get as many Winston Cup points as he can. He was third in Winston Cup points going into this race, 97 behind the later deal Earnhardt. Then comes Butch Miller, the Travis Carter entry car number 98, the Banford Food Piggly Wiggly car. Butch is currently shown three laps down in 20th position. And then comes Dave Marcus. They announced here this week that he has the Big Apple Supermarket, Big Apple Market sponsorship for the balance of the year. And congratulations to Dave. Still out there running. Now, we have uh, missed us some of the cars, but we are back to the leader. We missed the number 47 car driven by Jack Pennington in our trip around the racetrack, but Jack is still in competition, and he has shown four laps down in 22nd. There is Morgan Shepard, and he has put some distance between himself and second place Dale Earnhardt on lap number 254 of the Trans South 500. Back in a moment. 57 of 367 laps completed here at Darlington. The leader is Morgan Shepard. Dale Earnhardt is second. Brett Bodine third. Harry Gann fourth. And Dick Trickle is in fifth position. Running sixth is Bill Elliott. Mark Martin is seventh. Daryl Walter Bates. Ken Schrader ninth. And Jeff Bodine running in tenth position. This coming Saturday night, we bring... And at the moment, it is Morgan Shepard from Conover, North Carolina, showing the way in the Trans South 500. And he has opened up quite a lead on Dale Earnhardt. In fact, it's about a half a straightaway lead. Jerry Punch is down in the Morgan Shepard pit. We've got Greg Moore, who is one of the sons of Carl and Bud Moore. Now, Greg and Daryl are in the engine compartment, the department of, the, of this team. And, uh, Greg, you guys have really been working on the car, getting the chassis a little bit better and better. And finally, he was able to get around Earnhardt a little while ago. Yeah, Jerry, Morgan's doing us a real good job. Uh, we've made one adjustment, but one, one round of bite in the left rear. And he says everything's going good. Power wear is good. The radio's working out. We're just in a real good position right now. now after a pit stop, you seem to fade a little bit. Why? Well, some of the guys, I believe, have been coming in and putting on two. We put on four every time, and uh, we just don't want to be doing no gambling at this stage. We think he's running good enough to where we're going to give him the tires and let's take our time. That is Greg Moore here. I feel like the car really is good on used tires with the sticker tires. They aren't quite as quickly as they'd like to be. Let's go up pit road to Nick Bergman. Nick. 
Well, Jerry, I'm in the Bodine brothers' pit of sorts. They're almost next to each other here. Jeff Bodine, who had started on the pole, led so many laps before being involved in that accident, is still riding in the back of the pack, although on the lead lap. His primary problem, the car is loose. They have to be very, very careful here at Darlington with a loose car, because if you're not, boy, that concrete wall is awful, awful close. Meanwhile, Brett Bodine running in third position. He's at the other end of the scale. He's tight. That's right where Larry McReynolds, his crew chief, says he wants him to be. Control a tight car, they say. They're going to stay on the conservative side, leave him a little bit tight, leave him stay out there, and try to keep that thing running up front, as it has been much of the day. So it appears as if the Unical bonus money won't be awarded this afternoon if Jeff continues to have those problems because he is in 10th position. Now, Harry Gann is about to catch Brett Bodine for third place. Yeah, Brett had pulled out to about a three-second lead over Harry Gann, but Gant now is moving in on him. You can see there's only half a dozen car lengths or so before he gets to Brett Bodine, picking up a pretty good ever lap. So Brett moves around the 98 car of Butch Miller. Gant goes up on the outside. Ooh. <laughs> Way up on the outside. There's a crack in Harry's windshield, too, that hasn't gotten any worse during the course of the race. Again, this camera is mounted on his helmet. In this group of cars also would be the 26 car, of course, of Bodine, and 33 of Harry Gant. Then comes 66, Dick Trickle. He's still behind Harry Gant, as he has been since the drop of the green flag. And Bill Elliott's not too far behind, either. This is from Dick Trickle's Phillips 66 in-car camera. We're watching Harry Gant just ahead. We watch Dick Trickle's head move around from this in-car position so we can understand why Harry Gant's camera is bobbing around. Watch his head just bob around there. Watch that. It's amazing. No and wonder my neck gives me trouble, Benny. Exactly. <laughs> and now from uh, the camera mounted on Harry's helmet, See how much bouncing around he does in there. Boy, does he close up on Brett Bodine oh, is. going in that corner. He's really closing in on him. And now looking back on Dick Trickle. Ooh, Dick a little sideways there. And now Dick looking at Harry Gant. And I'll tell you what, these cars are close. Trickle's on the inside of Harry. Here comes Dick Trickle moving inside of Harry Gant. Nope, let him go. Got a little loose. The back end did on Trickle's car coming off of turn two. Boy, they are really tight for three on them now as they come off of turn four. There you can see them in their battle for third position. Brett Bodine, Harry Gant, and the triple. Nose to tail. The 66 car driven by Dick Trickle, owned by Cale Yarborough. And we have 100 laps to go in the Trans South 500. The leader of the race is Morgan Shepard, and number 15, the Motorcraft Ford, prepared by Bud Moore. Second place is Dale Earnhardt as we continue to bring you live coverage of this Winston Cup race here at Darlington. Back in just a moment. Action for third place on the track. Harry Gannon, number 33, has passed Brett Bodine for third. And now here comes Dick Trickle in the number 66 car trying to get by the 26 of Bodine. And Dick Trickle goes into third position, dropping Brett Bodine back to make that fourth. Well, wait a minute. Bill yeah. Elliott got by him, so that dropped him back to okay. another position. You've got to keep up, you know, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Dale Earnhardt's running second, Morgan Shepard leading. Harry Gant moved into third when he moved around the Brent Bodine car, and then Dick Trickle went into fourth. Now, Michael Waltrip is a lap down in the car number 30, the yellow car that we see moving around Dick Trickle, but he's really running fast. Bill Elliott just about grazed the wall up in turns one and two, the car running awfully high, which is... I think the car car is probably a little bit loose. He's having to go up there and try to catch some green racetrack. But unfortunately, they all went up there, and there's none left.
let's take a look at how Harry Gant made the pass on Brett Bodine a few laps ago and then got a little bit loose. Well, it was between turn, turns three and four that Bodine went high. Gant took the opportunity to dip right under, but then look what happens to Gant as he comes off at turn four. The back end oh. almost gets out into the wall, but Gant brings her back in. Dale Earnhardt is headed for pit road. Dale Earnhardt is making a pit stop. The guy that was running in second position, Jerry Punch, is in Dale Earnhardt's pit. Cecil Gordon and the crew now hold the sideboard up the bright orange Goodrich Ford. Now they go to work on the right side of the car. It will change right side tires. It will be a four tire change here under the green for Earnhardt. They have taken the left side. Scott Fluker now takes the left front and left rear lug nuts off. Moving around the left side of the car. Will Lance, David Smith, the crew now. Jeff Bodine also making his way down pit road to the Budweiser of floor. Let's go down to Dick Bergen as they finish the Earnhardt stop. Well, they needed to make this stop for sure, that loose problem. They now think possibly they had an equalized tire on the car. They also have made contact out there. The left front tire shows that they have rubbed up against somebody who had a blue car. It's going to be a four-tire change. This is routine stops. Everybody's figuring they're going to have to come in along about now and get a set of tires and get another load of fuel. And Bodine is done, and he is gone. So both Dale Earnhardt and Jeff Bodine have made their pit stops, and here comes Morgan Shepard, the leader of the race. Let's go back down to pit road. The Bud Moore and that Motorcraft crew will go to work on Morgan Shepard's Ford Thunderbird, the leader in the pits now for right side tires. Greg Moore now cleaning the windshield. They have changed right side tires, and likewise, Morgan Shepard will get four tires. They're pretty much obligated to take four. Everyone else putting four radios on. Kenny Schrader also in further up pit road. You see Kenny Schrader's Kodiak crew going to work on the left side of his car. They are likewise finishing the left side tire change for Shepard. Pumping off the fuel, Shepard is down and away. And Schrader got out just a little bit ahead of uh, Morgan Shepard. Both of them get up to speed now. Davey Allison is on pit road. So is Kyle Petty in car number 42. There is Morgan Shepard who gave up the lead. Moving back out to the racetrack. Here is the crew cam, the catch can man on Kyle Petty's car. As service is being completed on end, they're changing the tires on the left side of the car. The number 33 car is in. Jerry Punch is there. The defending champion of this Trans Down 500, Harry Gann, now has the skull Oldsmobile on pit road. They are cleaning the windshield. Here's Charlie Presley running around the left side of the car, carrying that 40-pound jack. They pull the left side tires off, roll the new ones in place, shove them on the lug nuts. Lug nuts now being attached to the air wrenches in. Car is down and away. Great pit stop here for the Leo Jackson crew. And we see Harry leaving pit road from his bumper cam as the Skull Oldsmobile picks up speed, headed toward turn number one, and here it is from the helmet cam. Now they have to keep it down on the flat part of the racetrack, Bob, until they get out of turn two and blend into the traffic going up the back stretch. The number 66 car of Dick Trickle goes into the lead. Because of the pit stops, Dick Trickle is the leader of the race as we continue to watch Harry Gant build up speed. There is the 66 car of Dick Trickle staying on the racetrack while the number nine car of Bill Elliott drops low on the banking and heads for pit road. Dick Trickle leads lap number 278. Here is Bill Elliott in for a pit stop on the Coors Melling Ford. And they'll go for a four-tire change as well. the right side at the moment now switching over to the left side of that fourth Thunderbird well they got those right side tires changed in a hurry about they, 12 seconds they've got a good one going and the work is completed a good stop in 21 and a half seconds for Bill Elliott he goes back out onto the racetrack and we understand now that the 66 car of Dick Trickle will be coming in next time around there he is see if he makes his pit stop at the moment Dick Trickle is the leader Rusty Wallace makes a pit stop he's six laps down in 23rd position never having been able to recover from that early incident up in turn number one now we watch Dick Trickle you can see him waving to the others behind him saying I'm headed for pit road Dick Trickle the leader of the race comes down off the banking of turn number four and Mark Martin is right behind him Boy, Mark Martin's getting a tough break because he had to follow the 66 car. Jerry, Jerry Bunch. 
Doug Williams and the rest of the Kale Yarbrough Motorsports crew now will go to work and likewise change four tires in Dick Trickle's car. The 48-year-old Wisconsin Rapid Wisconsin driver getting a four-tire change. Let's check it into Mark Martin Pitt. Dick. They're also going to do a four-tire change, Jerry, and they took a piece of the tape off the grill a little, little bit more air in there. These guys had been motoring to the front. They're looking for a tire change to give them still some more speed. Jerry Punch. They are trying to clean the windshield. Trickle's car is nearly stalled. He just gets a new fire to head down pit road, but it could have cost him a couple of seconds. And as he pulls out, we see the green car of Brett Bodine coming in. That's Mark Martin going out. Brett Bodine had taken the lead, but now he's in pit for a four-tire change. And the Quaker State crew. Let's go to Dick Bergman, who is there. Well, he's got a tire change that's going to have to work a miracle here because he's pushing except when he gets around other race cars. And when he gets around other race cars, this thing is loose. There's no way to solve that. He's also got some smoke showing from the front of the car in the area of the oil cooler. Red Bodine has taken four tires and is away. And that gives the lead once again to the number 15 car of Morgan Shepard. And guys, they will have to have one more pit stop before the end of the race. Yes, they will have to make another stop. We're on for fuel. 282, and the race is 367. So Morgan Shepard goes back into the lead after a series of pit stops. Back after these messages. Arlington, where the number 15 car, the leader, Morgan Shepard, has just put a lap on Ken Schrader in car number 25. Morgan Shepard showing the way here in the Trans South 500. You just get the impression Morgan Shepard came out of no place. I mean, he's been running good all day, but all of a sudden he is just dominating this thing. Now, I don't know if Jeff Bodine's problems or Dale Earnhardt's problems or whatever has caused him to look this way, but it looks as though Morgan Shepard had something for these guys all day long. Well, he has been up there in, in the top five uh, most of the time. After a couple of pit stops, he would drop back maybe to sixth or seventh. But he has run good all day. And, Benny, I'm sure that he would like to see this thing go green the rest of the way because he's uh, working very well out there now, running by himself, doesn't And, of course, if a caution comes out, then they all get bunched up and it's not quite as easy. Now. Well, he wants to see this green flag stay waving all afternoon from Harold Kennedy. Let's take a look at uh, Big A Auto Parts pit performance on Morgan Shepard. The driver time on that most recent pit stop was 18.4 seconds. The crew took 24.4 seconds to get four tires on the car and to fuel it, giving Morgan a total time of 42.8 seconds in the pits. Now, as a result of that, he came into the pits on lap 275 as the leader, and he comes out also in first place. Jerry Punch. You mentioned that Morgan Shepard would like to see the green flag continue throughout the day. Indeed, he would. And the reason is, I just talked to Bud Moore a minute ago. Remember back in Atlanta a couple of weeks ago, Morgan did not elect to come in and pit late in the race, whereas Earnhardt and some of the other guys did, although Earnhardt went underneath him there on the final lap to take the win. The reason is that Morgan's car is slower on brand new thicker tires. It takes about 10 or 12 laps for Morgan's car to come up to speed. Actually, Earnhardt can outrun him about a tenth of a second a lap for the first 10 or 12 laps. So what they don't want to see happen is have a late caution flight, say 15 laps or so to go, have everyone dive in for new tires. Morgan could be in trouble. By the way, the last time that Bud Moore had a winning car here at Darlington was in 1982, the Trans South 500, and the driver of the car was Dale Earnhardt. On the main straightaway, we have a hat that has uh, made its way onto the racetrack. Now, it is out of the groove and therefore is not causing any concern among the NASCAR officials, but there is a hat on the racetrack. Now, not mine. Know, it's not mine. That isn't your hat no, of the week, no. huh? Well, you do have a hat of the week. That feature is back for 1990. And what is it for this race here in Darlington? Well, Every American car company has out... Well, let's take a look. It's a Carson oil spill. It catches on fire. He picks up the phone. He calls Red Adele. Red gets the plane. He comes down, looks at it, says, sure, I'll put the fire out. Great. How much? One million dollars. Fellow can't afford it. He's bankrupt. But he's looking through the yellow pages. He finds it. John Smith, oil fires, my specialist. He calls John, explains the situation. John said, sure, I'll put the fire out for $10,000. The fellow said, come on, I'm waiting on you. A couple hours later, he's on a knoll overlooking the oil field. Up the hill comes John Smith in this old truck, kind of like Mr. Henley's 49 Ford F6, with a bunch of people on the back of the truck. The truck goes right by the fellow down in the oil field, and they jump off the back with shovels and burlap sacks, and they put the fire out. As the fellow is paying John Smith, he writes a check out for $10,000. He hands it to him. He says, I realize this is a little personal, but what are you going to do with the money? 
fellow said, I'll tell you, the first thing I'm going to do is fix the brakes on this old truck. So thank you, Darren, from Arkansas for sending my hat. The hat is going to Asheville, North Carolina. The Sky High chapter of the American Business Women's Association is having next Saturday at the Grove Park Inn a champagne chapeau. Sounds like a lot of fun. Beverly Freeman, I've already got a bid. I'll let you know how much it is. A champagne what? Chapeau. Oh, okay. That's <laughs> French for hat. Did you know that? I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> Benny Parsons, Hat of the Week, 112 South Main Street, Ellerby, North Carolina, 28338. Back at the Trans South 500 at the track, too tough to tame, Darlington International Raceway, and the leader is Morgan Shepard in car number 15, the Motor Craft Ford. Now, Dick Trickle has probably driven some dirt tracks in his life, but he didn't have his car any more sideways on dirt than he had down between turns three and four just a few laps ago. We're riding with Dick Trickle. He survived all that, but this is how it looked. The car just gets sideways. He never goes completely around. Just sideways, he comes down. Gets the car back in gear. He still hasn't been in the pits. And it did not create a yellow. Let's go to Jerry Punch, who's with the car owner, Cale Yarborough. Well, Cale had to chuckle a little bit. You know, he's driven quite a few laps here at the track, too tough to tame. In fact, he's won five times. And, Cale, you got to be pretty pleased with your driver. I would say you're a young driver, but this guy's about the same age as you are. He's doing a heck of a job for you today. Well, Dick's doing a fine job. I can't hear everything you're saying, but uh, he's doing a fine job. He's a little bit loose right now. He just spun one time, but... He got to gather back up, and uh, I hope we're going up with a good finish here. Kelly Yarbrough here watching his driver, uh, Dick Trickle. Now, he picked a guy about his age that's uh, also about his same height to drive this race car. And those few laps ago, apparently what happened is Dick Trickle just complained the car was loose. He just couldn't hold it. So he just slid broadside, <laughs> turned three and four, put it back in gear, and drove it away. <laughs> By the way, Dick is a lap down now in 10th position, but uh, he did a nice job saving that car and uh, keeping it going. Oh, we have a trouble up in between turns one and two. A couple of cars are involved, both of them sliding down the banking. It looks like Dick blew an engine going in the corner. Alan Kowicki got in the oil. Yep. Okay, Dick Trickle, there he is from our in-car camera. He is getting the goggles off. Yellow out on lap 299. Dick Trickle apparently blowing an engine, and behind him came Alan Kowicki sliding in the oil. Here's a replay. There the engine blows. Kowicki has no place to go. He tries to go low. And then he tries to go high, gets in the oil, spins, and hits the wall. Oh, awfully boy. hard. Sure he does. Yeah. This is not what Morgan Shepard wanted. He had a 12-second lead. So Alan Kowicki's badly battered Cerex Ford sets in turn number one as the eighth caution flag of the afternoon flies over Darlington International Raceway in the Trans South 500. And because of an incident down between turns one and two involving Dick Trickle and Alan Kowicki. Now we'll replay it from the in-car of Dick Trickle. The engine let go as he came off of the uh, front stretch. That engine has already blown. He gets in his own oil there. Spins, goes up, backs in the wall, and then back down to the inside. Alan Kowicki, who was behind him, has no place to go. Gets in the oil and bam. Now we'll look at it in real time and have you listen. can see that Dick Trickle is okay and he's lighting up a cigarette. He's uh, through for the day, but might as well enjoy the ride back to the pit area. Now this caution was a break for another fella. That was Michael Waltrip, who had got out of sequence as far as pit stops were concerned. He had made an unscheduled pit stop and had got a lap down, but when others pitted under green, this let uh, Michael Waltrip get back in the lead lap. And for more on that, let's go to the pits and Dick Berger. Right, you are dead, Jared, and it was absolutely perfect timing. They had called Michael Waltrip into the pit area. He was on his way into the pits when that yellow flag happened. So this thing could not have been timed any better for him. Just a few seconds one way or the other, and Michael Waltrip might have been out of this thing. Now, his crew chief just radioed to him, Michael, behave yourself. I think we can win this thing. He does have enough fuel to go all the way. Earnhardt's guys say he has enough fuel to go all the way. 
We are really getting ready for what could be a terrific finish here this afternoon in Darlington. If Michael Waltrip does win this race, he could set a record for having the most battered car ever to visit Victory Lane because there you can see him, and that thing is uh, streaming some 200-mile-an-hour tape and looks like it has been through a war on the track too tough to tame, but indeed, Michael Waltrip is still in contention to win this Trans South 500. Another break back in a moment. Back of the Trans South 500 still under caution and watching Harry Gant as he gets lined up for the restart. We are under caution because of an incident involving Dick Trickle and Alan Kowicki. Here's Jerry Punch with Dick Trickle. Well, Dick just climbed out of the car talking with Doug Williams, who's the crew chief here, and of course, Kelly Arbor, the car owner. Dick, first of all, uh, what happened up there? Well, you know, we broke a motor, and you know, the motor just gave up on us and locked up going into one. And you know, that's about the worst place you can blow a motor is going into one. And, you know, uh, you end up with a, a little brake problem going on anyhow. And she just locked the motor up, and I tried to clutch it and, you know, get out in there, but she went around on me. But, but we got, you know, the old top Arctic motor oil, Phil 66 Pontiac up to the top five. And we've been running all day, and I think we're going to have a real good finish. A couple laps before that, you uh, the car got a little loose on you going in the three. What happened up there? Well, I was trying, trying to stay in the lead lap, and you know, I ran a top five there for quite a while. And I was trying to hang in the lead lap, and... Uh, the leader was only like a second behind me, so I thought I'd try to pick up the pace just a little bit. And she was a little loose, and I found out about it. I got sideways, went through the whole turn sideways, but I did bring it back and you know, didn't spin it out and saved it. I lost a little time on the racetrack, but you know, it's, you know, I'm just happy that Kelly Arbor, you know, chose me to drive his car. I mean, it gives me a good feeling inside. So I did have family and people out there, and we'll be back. No doubt they'll be back, and we're going back to the green. Green flies on lap 305. So now everybody is in good shape as far as pit stops are concerned. If we go green the rest of the way, nobody will have to uh, have any fuel. We're set for a dash to the finish. The leader is Morgan Shepard. Second place is Dale Earnhardt. In third place is Harry Gann. Fourth is Mark Martin. And fifth is Brent Bodine. And our congratulations to William Adams of Indianapolis, Indiana, who was watching ESPN and knew that Jeff Bodine was a leader at the halfway challenge. And William Adams from Indianapolis, Indiana, wins a 1990 Pontiac Grand Prix. Baby Alice in the black car with the blue white star. Ooh, they get up, they get loose. Morgan gets loose. Davy Allison comes alongside. He's trying to get a lap back. Meanwhile, Earnhardt behind him watching all this stuff. And Davy Allison does get a lap back. And now there are nine cars on the lead lap. And here comes Dale Earnhardt to take the lead from Morgan Shepard. He's got it. Well, we've heard that Shepard's car don't run too well with new tires on. He takes a little while for that car to really come in. And here's living proof of that. We'll see if Dale Earnhardt can put Davey Allison a lap down. He would certainly like to because Davey has been strong all afternoon and has not let those problems that have plagued him hamper him at all. He has been fighting back all afternoon. And here comes Harry Gant, who is still very much in the contention. He is in third position. And Dale Earnhardt does get put the lap on Davey Allison as we are inside Harry Gant's car from the in-car camera. Let's go to Dick Borgren, who has information on tires. Well, an interesting story, Bob Jenkins. Harry Gant has just radioed to his crew chief, and he said, I hope Morgan Shepard doesn't get another set of tires like the ones he just took off. It could be bye-bye. By the same token, Richard Childress said they simply cannot tighten up Dale Earnhardt's car. As well as Earnhardt is running, they think there's more there, but they can't get it exactly right. I really think, fellas, if this thing goes green, the rest of the way that Morgan Shepard's car will come in as we see a tremendous battle here. Morgan Shepard's car will come yep. in as Earnhardt slows down a little later on, but time will tell if that does happen. Yeah, I think you're right. Michael yep. Waltrip here behind Brett Bodine and ahead of Jeff Bodine. It's a great run for both Jeff Bodine and Michael Waltrip this afternoon. Jeff Bodine was alongside Michael Waltrip, maybe turns three and four the last lap. Michael did not back out of his stage. You're going to have to pass him from position. Jeff could not make the pass going off turn four. Let's see if he tries it again. That's sixth and seventh they're racing for. And the number 11 car currently in seventh position was the pole center of this race and the only one eligible to win Unical bonus money. It looks like as if it will go to Bristol. And there is Jeff Bodine taking the position away from Michael. Well, you know, they've had an opportunity to work on that 11 car in the Budweiser Ford. They might uh, have that thing dialed back in again. 
number nine car of Bill Elliott, also one of those on the lead lap. Dale Earnhardt now has Davey Allison behind him. There are eight cars on the lead lap, and Morgan Shepard is hanging right in there. He's the third car on your screen, but the second place car on the racetrack. Cheers, Cherry Punch. It's awfully tough on Morgan Shepard right now to be patient, and he is not a very patient person. He likes to lead as many laps as he could, somewhat like Earnhardt, but they have told him here in the Shepard pits, just bide your time. Now, we've already told you at home that Morgan Shepard's car does not run nearly as well as Earnhardt's and some of the others on brand new tires. Now, they have told Shepard to sit there and ride, and probably in the next 8, 10, 12 laps, probably by lap 325, they'll be chasing you. That's what Morgan's going to do, sit there and be patient. And we will see if that is the way things go within the next half hour or so as we wind down the Trans South 500. We talked earlier about the guys who have looked strong in 1990. Look at this. Dale Earnhardt and Morgan Shepard are the only two drivers with top 10 finishes in each of the Winston Cup races that we have competed in 1990. And at the moment, it's Earnhardt the leader and Morgan Shepard running in second position. We'll be back with more live coverage in just a moment. We hope you're enjoying today's live coverage of stop number five on the Winston Cup Tour for 1990, the Trans South 500 from the track too tough to tame, Darlington International Raceway in South Carolina. While we were going to break, we had an incorrect standings. Here is the corrected top ten, Earnhardt, Shepard, Gant, Martin, and Brett Bodine. 6 through 10, Jeff Bodine, Michael Waltrip, Bill Elliott, Davey Allison, and Daryl Waltrip. That's with 317 laps completed. Well, we have a battle shaping up here. Now, Davey Allison has gotten his lap back once again from Dale Earnhardt, giving us nine cars on the lead lap. And Morgan Shepard is right there on Dale Earnhardt's back bumper. But and Harry Gant and Mark Martin has closed up on the back of Harry Gant. I mean, Morgan Shepard. So we've got four cars very, very close. And the number 11 car driven by Jeff Bodine has also been on the move recently. There you can see he has gotten around his brother, Brett, and Jeff Bodine is now fifth and certainly not out of this race. No, he's not. I believe the car is running better. They had some problems for a while after he got involved in that accident, but the car is back up to speed now. So the Unical bonus money may be won after all here this afternoon by Jeff Bodine. If it isn't, it will go to Bristol, Tennessee next weekend for the Valleydale Meets 500 that we will have live for you at 1 o'clock. Let's go down to the pit area and get an update on the radial tire situation with Dick Bergeron. Well, Bob Jenkins, this is the very first time that Goodyear has brought the radial tire here to Darlington, and a lot of people wondered about the wisdom of that, given the difficulty, the treachery of this speedway. But now that we're virtually at the end of the race, I think maybe it's time to give a tip of the Benny Parsons hat of the week to Goodyear. The tires have worked absolutely flawlessly today. Before the race started, the driver said this is absolutely the best tire that Goodyear has shown up with. So Goodyear has produced, they have done the Herculean, great job today, no tire failures, no blisters, no problems. Dick Bergen, why in the world would you buy all that hair and wear a hat? <laughs> hey, Benny Parsons, <laughs> April Fool, I got some roll bar padding last night. <laughs> well, we, we saw Jimmy Spencer buy a uh, toupee earlier in the year. Now Dick Bergman has also decided to. Benny, when, you, when are you going to do that? No, I wouldn't oh, be right. No, I wouldn't look right in there. <laughs> yeah. See, Dick has to work outside where the sun That's shining, right. so he, he needs it. It job. saves the suntan lotion, doesn't it, Dick? Well, it not only saves the suntan lotion, I'm hoping that some of those pretty girls who have been paying attention to flat nose might show up and <laughs> pay some attention to me. I don't know. <laughs> Well, we better pay some attention to the front end here because Morgan Shepard is beginning to get serious about Dale Earnhardt leading this race. Yeah, he sure is. He's now within about a car length on Dale Earnhardt as Morgan Shepard is looking for the lead here on lap 323 of the Trans South 500. Now, since we talked about Harry Gant and Mark Martin moving in a little bit, they haven't gained any more on the front runners. Jeff Bodine, we talked about him moving into fifth place. Actually, he's losing ground to the leaders right now. He's about six seconds behind. Morgan Shepard has plenty of time. Bud Moore, I think those guys were correct in telling him that you're... Oh, he hits Morgan the wall. Morgan gets in the wall hard. And yeah. let's...
Let's see if there's any damage to the car. Let's see how that affected Morgan Shepard. He may have seen his chances of winning go up against the wall right then. Well, he's told his crew chief, Bud, and uh, others that he is okay. Mark Martin, we understand, also had a similar incident a couple of laps ago, and here it is. Hey, we'll take a look. He goes in and way up towards the wall he goes. Gets a little piece of it. Apparently not too much damage. You can see it's a little smoke. And now here's Morgan's problem. He just goes in the corner. Now he's been going up very close to the wall, but this time right in the wall. Just thrust it not hard, but enough. I think it's enough that he's going to, that he cannot catch Earnhardt now. As a matter of fact, it looks to me like Harry Gant's closing up on Morgan Shepard. Well, certainly, Shepard is losing ground to Earnhardt. Yeah, yeah. Harry Gant is gaining on. There is Harry in third position. We go inside the car again, and this is the camera on the helmet. Let's go down to the pits with Jerry Punch. He can update us on Morgan Shepard. Well, we're actually standing here with Bud Moore, and Bud, uh, Morgan did tap the wall up there. Does it say anything about how the car's hurt? Well, he said it's all right, he think, and uh, he's checking it out right now. We'll know in a minute. A lot of concern here in the Motorcraft pits. In fact, uh, we are told they were thinking about bringing him in and changing two right-side tires. They don't want to leave him out there and have him cut a tire, but possibly a question. Uh, we'll see what's going to happen with Bud Moore and Morgan Shepard. Well, Benny, do you slow down for a little bit of time after something like that happens and just to check the car out? Well, you've got to get your heart beat, first of all, because he's scared <laughs> to death. Sure, you're going to slow down. You just can't go back in there and do the same thing you did the last time because the last time you hit the wall. It didn't work too good. So the threat now is that Morgan Shepard will lose second position to Harry Gant. An exciting conclusion shaping up here at the Grand South 500. A lot more racing to go on this Sunday afternoon. Where Dale Earnhardt leads the Trans South 500, and now Morgan Shepard, who was losing ground, is sneaking back up on Dale. Third place belongs to Harry Gant. Mark Martin is fourth, and Jeff Bodine is in fifth position. Then in sixth is Brett Bodine, followed by Michael Waltrip, Bill Elliott, Davey Allison, and Daryl Waltrip, who is a lap down. And we have a battle on the racetrack between the number 26 car of Brett Bodine and Bill Elliott in number nine. And that stat has changed because Michael Waltrip has passed Brett Bodine. Now Bill Elliott moving up on Bodine. Brett so has been losing some ground here in the last few laps. Yes, he has. That Quaker State Buick has run so well for Brett Bodine throughout the afternoon, but now he finds himself dropping back just a little and is battling for the uh, seventh position here. Bill Elliott runs in eight. Well, what do you think? That little incident hurt Morgan's car, or has he got the handle back on it? Look, I think it hurt his pocket this morning, did anything yeah. else. It looks like the handle's back on the race car. Car doesn't have any smoke off the tires where it might be rubbing the fender or anything. I just, he knows now that he has to be very, very patient because this racetrack will reach out and slap you in the face almost at any time. It sure will, and I think he just sort of tiptoed for six or eight laps there, and he got his confidence back up now, so he's back up there working on Dale Earnhardt again. What do you think, Jerry Punch? That's exactly what happened. In fact, we may mention that the spotter has played a big role in Morgan Shepard deciding to push the button again, and the spotters are on top of a building up in turn one, They're on top of the press box here at Darlington, and that spotter who had binoculars have been watching Morgan going into turns one and two, looking at that right rear tire, make sure that it's not rubbing too badly, and they finally go ahead and give it Morgan the go-ahead, say, okay, push the button and go after it. He is going <laughs> awfully I'm close to the wall. Is. It tells that spotter to tell Martin not to get so close to the wall. Man, he, was, he was almost in it again between the first and second turns. That lap. It's a Chevy versus Ford battle here in the late going. And the Oldsmobile of Harry Gant isn't too far behind. The Gant is keeping them in sight. And He's the course, defending champion, of course. And also, he won yesterday's Bush Grand National race that we televised here on ESPN. The helmet cam once again. Boy, you can imagine how tired he must be after an afternoon of this bumping and banging around inside that car and controlling its speeds well over 170 miles an hour. He's not wearing gloves. And he's got a ring on there. He's just like he was going down to the store for the local bread. See, he was a winner not only last year but also in 1983. 
Now, fellas, you know we talked at the top of the show about this Trans South 500 has never been one out of the top 10. Those three guys running up front there, Earnhardt started 15th, Shepard started 19th, Gant started 20th. Those are three of the guys we talked about. Exactly the group we was talking about, Devin. Yeah. Looks like our string of uh, winners coming from the top 10 will be broken here this afternoon. Now look how close Harry Gant is moving in, and Mark Martin is also closing in on the leader. Yeah, we're going to have a four-car race here in a moment. Now, if Shepard has anything left, he looks in his rearview mirror and sees those fellas moving in. He said, maybe I better go ahead and try to pass Earnhardt. Everybody is going right up against the wall there between one and two. Well, they said it's a groove. If the racetrack was a foot wider, they'd be running a foot higher because they're just desperately trying to find some adhesion. And they keep going up, up, up the racetrack. But unfortunately, they went as high as they can go. There is nothing else there. Plus, they're looking into that sun down there. It's getting hard to see where they're going anyway. Exactly. Western Auto mechanic of the race has been chosen, and it is Billy Engel, the chief uh, mechanic on Michael Waldrop's crew. And I totally agree with that assessment because he has put that car back together. It's still flapping and banging around out there, but uh, it's running well and uh, still in the lead lap, as a matter of fact. Yeah, he's running six. Really, he's, he's doing right well. Back to the leader, meanwhile, it is still Dale Earnhardt leading. Morgan Shepard and Harry Gant. Morgan, the Mark Martin automobile has fallen back, so he's out of contention for the win, it looks like right now, unless there is a caution play. We take a look at those that have dropped out of competition. Several eliminated a multi-car tangle out of turn number four. The only injury suffered by Neil Bonnet, who has not been conscious, is being checked over and given a CAT scan at a local hospital in Florence, South Carolina. We hope that Neil Bonnet is okay. I understand that when you said uh, Mark Martin dropped back, Benny, that he hit the wall again. Ah. Here he is, right there in third position. This is the in-car camera now, not the one on his helmet. No way to pull this thing. Right. <laughs> what do we got? 27 laps to go. We're on lap 340. the difference between the in-car camera and the helmet camera. That thing has worked very well today and really given us a perspective of how things are for a driver. We saw Harry back off the gas, hit the brakes. He hit the brake with his right foot. A lot of race car drivers use the left foot for the brake, but Harry again went in using his right foot on the brake. That does make a great shot for coming from his head. You know, we've talked about doing that uh, uh, sometimes in the past with the crew cam with so many different things that can be done with it. And Richard Brown, uh, a former driver many, many years ago, made the suggestion to me a month or so ago, said, why don't you post price? And I think that'd be a whale of a shot. I brought it up in one of our production meetings, and uh, it has. I think it works good. It sure has. Kerry Gant finished ninth at uh, Atlanta two weeks ago and is currently third here at Darlington and certainly in the contention to win this race. 500 now for the rest of the race and there are 22 more laps to go. The lead is held by the number three car of Dale Earnhardt. In second is the 15 of Morgan Shepard and third is Harry Gant in car number 33 and that's how close they are. They go to the outside to pass Rusty Wallace who has struggled throughout this race and is currently in 21st position after being involved in an accident very early on. The top three cars. Okay guys, it's time to pick who's the toughest of the uh, trio here that are battling for the lead. All right, let me go first. I believe Morgan Shepard has something left. I believe that he's going to pass Dale Earnhardt if this thing stays green the rest of the way. I think that he's, he's backing up. He'll let his tires cool a little bit. Then he comes back up there on him. I just believe he has something left. i got to think of Harry Gant, that these guys, I think Morgan Shepard don't have that much left, and we know that Earnhardt, after a long run, gets worse and worse. I don't, we really don't know. Un Harry Gant is an unknown. So I'll go with Harry again. All right, let's go to Jerry Punch for a prediction. Well, I gotta agree with Ned Jarrett. I think if Morgan Shepard chews nails and spits razor blades, I believe he's got something left. And uh, while I'm standing here, let me find out if he actually does from Greg Moore. And Greg, you build the motors, you and your brother Daryl. Does Morgan have something left for him? Yeah, Jerry, I really do think so. Old, old Motorcraft Thunderbird's pretty tough today. It's got a pretty tough engine in it. 
Well, this guy, I don't know. He put it together. Let's see who, who Dick thinks is going to win it here. How, what do you think, Dick? Jerry, when Dale Earnhardt is running in the front at the tail end of an auto race, I would never go against him. Right now, there's a there's crash right. up in the fourth corner. Fire sideways up in turn four. Oh, and it was right in front of the leaders, too. That's Jack Pennington that spun coming off the fourth corner. Well, now, all of that goes out the window. <laughs> Yeah. Shepard took the lead, but they probably will make pit stops and Shepard's car don't run as fast on new tires. Ah, there's Pennington getting the car headed in the right direction. But the ninth caution flag of the afternoon is out. And it comes on lap 348. 19 laps from the finish of the race. There is Morgan Shepard, who is now the leader. Is he going to pit, Bob? What do you say? Oh, he's too late. He's coming in. <laughs> Shepard yeah. and Gant and Dale Earnhardt all make pit stops here. Let's go to Jerry Punch. Morgan Shepard bringing the Motorcraft Four down pit road. Not, not what they wanted to see happen, but they're here anyway, changing all four tires. They go to the right side of the car. Morgan Shepard on top of your screen. Dale Earnhardt on the bottom. We'll see which crew is going to get this car out first. That may make the biggest difference here. Remember, Shepard does not have the speed on fresh rubber. Left side tire now on the Earnhardt Goodrich crew. They're on the left side of the likewise of the Motorcraft Ford car. They are moving here and trying to change tires. Earnhardt's crew now getting ready to off the jack. Earnhardt off the jack. He is out of the way. Shepard is out of the way. Here we get. Now we get the move. So it'll be Earnhardt, Shepard, then again as they head for turn one. That is indeed the way they come out of the pits. And Mark Martin accelerating out of the pits, having a very close encounter with Jeff Bodine as he went down off the jacks at the end of pit road. Yeah, how many positions did Jeff Bodine pick up? He went out in front of a couple of those guys. Yeah, he, he sure did. Here comes Bill Elliott out, Ken Schrader moving back onto the racetrack. I've got another monkey race to throw in the deal. Yep. Davey Allison is now back in the lead lap. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. That's right. He was right in front of the leaders he, when that caution yep. came out. Let's see how Morgan Shepard threaded his way through this spin by Jack Pennington. There's wow. Davey Allison, the first car through with the white hood. Is Davey Allison, the black car. And boy, I tell you what, Dale Earnhardt almost got Richard Petty collected up in that deal. And here is the angle from our speed shot. Second car up on top of the racetrack. You can yep. see Pennington's car gets loose, spins around, and the leaders, here they come, bearing down. Now watch, there goes Morgan Shepard, and Earnhardt had to go to the high side, and a result of that finds himself in second. Let's go to Dick Bergen with a, a follow-up on Earnhardt. Well, Bob, he definitely did make contact in that situation, and has knocked out the right front headlight cover. I just talked to Kirk Shelmerdine, who said he is not worried about that at all. If this was a big super speedway, he would be, but for here for this afternoon, he's not worried at all. And I'll tell you, when Earnhardt's guys finished that pit stop, they knew how well they did. They were like a bunch of football players that just scored a touchdown. They jumped up in the air, threw their arms in the air. They were happy. Jerry? This is the right rear tire that came off the Motorcraft Ford. Now you saw Morgan Shepard slam the wall a few laps back, and it was rubbing. Take a look here. The fender well inside the right rear was rubbing this tire, but Morgan Shepard was still catching Earnhardt. Now, how do you figure that, guys? <laughs> Amazing is all I can say. Wonder what he's going to do. See the fabric now. there. The, the fender had almost rubbed a hole in the tire. Yeah, he would. He might have been in the pits before too long if that caution had not come out. So maybe it was not. Uh, uh, such a disadvantage for him anyway. Jeff Bodine came out in second place, fellas, after on that uh, caution pit stop. An enthusiastic crowd gets up for the restart. Here's lap 351 out of 367. The green back out, and Dale Earnhardt is the leader of the Trans South 500 once again, and Jeff Bodine is running second. Third is Mark Martin. Fourth is Morgan Shepard, and fifth is Harry Gannis. They go down the back stretch. Pulling out to an advantage. Well, we understand that Morgan Shepard might still have a little bit of a front rear tire rub. Not too many laps to go, but Morgan came out in fourth place. Here's our pit stop. A little swirly coming out of the second corner down the back stretch. Mark Martin has just gotten by Kenny Schrader. So he's closed up on the back of the 11 car, Jeff Bodine. There's Bodine in second position, followed closely by Mark Martin. 
I don't think there's enough time for Morgan Shepard to get his car going. No. We've noticed all day it takes 15, 20 laps for his car to really be good. So I don't think yeah. there's enough time left for Morgan. Yeah, I agree with you, Benny. If he's, he's back in that traffic, I just don't think that he has enough time left to get up there. And you know, guys, we didn't complete our uh, predictions. At least I didn't get a chance to predict uh, who was going to win this race, and I will now predict that Dale Earnhardt will win. <laughs> well, of course. Yeah, but uh, I think I started out by saying if it goes green the right. rest of the way. <laughs> well, Dale Earnhardt has won four of the past eight races here at Darlington. Now the Unical bonus money is at $15,200 and can be won only by Jeff Bodine, and he currently is in second. I'll tell you what, Jeff Bodine is trying as hard as he can. He has got a handful. I noticed down in the first and second corner, he went through the corner like a snake with travel. Up, down. Look, Look at Davey Allison moving through traffic. Man, oh man, he moves to the inside of Michael Waltrip, and Davey Allison may be the fastest car on the racetrack. Yes, but does he have enough time to get too very far back up towards the front? He's got a lot of racetrack between himself and the leader, Neil Earnhardt. A lot of racetrack. I think not that only is sixth place. Not only a lot of racetracks, but as Ned said, sixth place. He's got four more race cars to get by before he can get to Dale Earnhardt. And some of those are pretty tough, including Harry Gant and Morgan Shepard. Gant running fifth, Morgan Shepard running fourth. Those two guys are racing for position. Brett Bodine and Dale and uh, Bill Elliott. And of course, Michael Waltrip is also. There now is the leader, Dale Earnhardt. Well, that car takes off on new tires. Dropping back and showing you second position, Jeff Bodine. And Mark Martin, who is in third place. I've written off Jeff Bodine a couple of times this afternoon, but he still is very much in the thick of things. Mark Martin pulls up right on the back of Jeff Bodine, trying to make a move down the front. Let's see. Nine laps to go. Mark Martin will make no move on Jeff Bodine, at least going into the corner. Now in the middle of the corner between one and two, Mark Martin passes Jeff Bodine, and Mark Martin is now second, and he sets his sights on the leader, Dale Earnhardt. And I think he does have too much race track. There's no cars between him and Earnhardt, but I think there is too much race track for him to catch Dale. Now we'll show you the interval between first and Davey Allison. There's Davey on the bottom side of the racetrack, now pulling in behind Harry Gant. And oh. look at Davey Allison go to the inside of Harry Gant. But there were nine cars on the lead lap, and he was at the back of the, of the lead pack once they came out of the pit because he was the last car to pit. He had to go all the way around the racetrack to catch up, and yeah. now he's up there battling for fourth. Harry Gant's bumper cam. Or battling for fifth, I should say. Morgan Shepard has passed Harry Gant and has taken over four. So fourth, fifth, and sixth place you're seeing on your screen right now. Here comes Davey once again looking to the inside of Harry Gant as they go into one, and he'll take the position. Davey Allison will take over the Caution. fifth spot. And here's Mike Alexander on the front straightaway has backed into the wall. Alexander crashing out of corner number four. The car stopped just before the start finish line here on the main straightaway on lap number 359 our 10th caution period of the day and the leader Dale Earnhardt takes the caution flag there he is okay now do you pit there's not that many laps to go Earnhardt certainly didn't want to see this caution he had a good lead but what do you think Benny well I don't I don't think that Earnhardt will pit no I don't think he'll pit I agree. I, I don't think they, they will. But. The only guy that will pit is the car is the last car on the lead lap, or the last two or three cars yeah. on the lead lap. There are only seven more laps to go, less than seven. Actually, 360 laps have been completed, and the field is in turn number three. And, and he's going to take, take two or three laps or so. Yeah, yeah he'll yeah. take at least three laps to get Mike Alexander's car picked up. and uh, So that would only leave him perhaps uh, four or so laps to go. Jeff Bodine. Oh, Jeff Bodine is dropping down off the banking and headed for pit road. So Jeff Bodine relinquishes third place and scoots down pit road to get some uh, fresh tires on that car. Here comes Michael Waltrip also and Bill Elliott. So three of the top nine cars are in for pit stops. I, I agree with those that are maybe Jeff Bodine. Of course, Mark Martin had already passed him. So 
you know, maybe he figured those others are going to catch up now as a result of the caution. So that was a, perhaps a good move by him and certainly a good move by Michael Waltrip. That's Richard Childress, the car owner for Dale Earnhardt. He's wishing this thing were over. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. The crew does not the crew does not look like that uh, they're preparing in any way for a Dale Earnhardt stop. They're ready to watch the finish of this race, which will come in about five and a half more laps. The Harry Gantz crew was out on pit road. They were ready to bring him in, but he did not come in. The wrecker is here on the main straightaway trying to grab a hold of Mike Alexander's car and get it off the racetrack. Alexander crashing here on the front stretch. He was running, Bob, in the 14th position, three laps down. Mike Alexander, Ray Vestas, Buick. Bobby Allison owned. Deal comes down off the fourth turn and completes lap number 363. Let's get down to Dick Bergman, who's with Richard Childress. Well, do you think this thing's going to go green? And if it does, what are you going to do? Well, you know, it's all up to Dale. He's just going to have to go hard. You know, we didn't need this caution. It seemed like all year long we hadn't needed these cautions at the end of the day. But, you know, Dale, he'll just go as hard as he can and be a thorough win, I guess. You've been talking about the car being loose all day. What's it like right now for this end stretch run? Well, we made an adjustment on it. Uh, the stop before and it's helped it a whole lot. So, you know, with each used tires, we just don't know how we'll run. We just have to take off and see. It looks like it's going to be about three to go or four to go. Well, that's the story with Dale Earnhardt. Meanwhile, Jerry Punch is down pit road with Steve Meal, crew chief for Mark Martin. Jerry, what's you got to say? Well, Steve, the big question is with three or four laps to go, now they're bunched up. Can Mark handle Dale? I don't know. I'm sure Dale's pulling a little bit more gear than us. We don't restart as good as some of these cars, but we're doing a real good job being where we're at. I, I don't know. It's going to be real tough. The three's been strong all day. We've been too tight. We just have now got the car where we want it. It'd be something to see. It'd be fun to watch. Indeed, it will be fun to watch with three or four laps to go, gentlemen. That's an understatement. <laughs> 363 laps will be completed when they come down and they will receive the one lap sign. So we will therefore go back to green on lap 364. And that'll give us three laps of green. Now Morgan Shepard has moved up to third place as a result of Jeff Bodine making the pit stop. And did he get to run enough that that car is, uh, is loosened up? Next Sunday, we'll be in Bristol, Tennessee on the half-mile High Bank Bristol International Raceway for the Valleydale Meets 500. And next Friday night in, in, in Kingsport, Tennessee, I'm going to go over to the Allendale Mansion and do the half of the week over there Friday night. Oh, There's good. It's going to be a, a fundraiser. A bunch of race car drivers are going to be there. So all you folks in Kingsport, the Allendale Mansion, come over and see us. There is Mark Martin's crew as they have their fingers crossed, hoping that Mark can pull off a victory and pass Dale Earnhardt here in the last three laps. Earnhardt keeping those tires warm as he heads for the green flag and a restart of this event. You know, Steve Neal made a good point there that Earnhardt, he always gets through those gears in a hurry, gets a good restart. And if he does that again, it just might make the difference. Look at Morgan Shepard. He is chomping at the bit. How about the 28 car, Davey right. Allison? Yep. Any four of those cars can win this race easily. Let's see how things go. We get set for a restart and the final three circuits around Darlington International Raceway. A slow restart. Here comes Earnhardt off the fourth corner, now beginning to move up through the gears. The green flag waves on lap 364. We got three more laps to go. Well, Earnhardt knew that he was going to accelerate back into the fourth, so he tried to bring the field down as slow as he possibly could. But Mark Martin is staying right there with him within about two or three car lengths. Morgan Shepard and Davey Allison got hung up in some slower cars. And look at Mark Martin close in on Dale Earnhardt for the lead. He's within one and a half car lengths. Mark Martin has already won, of course, this year in Winston Cup competition. Davey Allison just took over the third spot from Morgan Shepard. Davey Allison is the fourth car there in line. He's third in the race. There are two more laps to go. Mark Martin won the race at Richmond. He was fifth two weeks ago at Atlanta for his two top five finishes. He is second here this afternoon, but I'm not sure that he's going to be able to pull off the victory as Dale Earnhardt continues to lead the Trans South 500. The crowd is going wild here in Darlington. Here comes Earnhardt off of corner number four, and the white flag waves by Harold Kinder. One more lap to go for Dale Earnhardt. 
the advantage over Mark Martin. About two, two and a half, maybe three car lengths down the back stretch. There's now just one half lap to go. Mark Martin trying everything he can to pull off a victory here this afternoon, but it looks as if he's going to come up short. Here comes Dale Earnhardt down off the banking. On the main straightaway, Dale Earnhardt wins the Trans South 500. Mark Martin finishes second, and Davey Allison finished in third place. with us all day on, on trying to get us feedback to help let us help the car a little bit. We didn't really know what to do with the thing. It, it just never was perfect all day. And boy, this is a heck of a place to have to drive with a, with a kind of a less than, less than perfect car, you know, so. What kind of shapes your heart in? Mine is pounding like mad. Do you ever get used to these kinds of finishes? Yeah, you get used to them. I don't think you ever get quite over them, but you get used to them. Well, this is a very happy pit area. They're out surrounding their driver. He's driving down pit lane. Headed for victory lane, and they're all going to go down and join him very shortly. And he'll do it for the second time in 1990 and the second consecutive Winston Cup race. Dale Earnhardt has finished in the top ten every race this year, and so has Morgan Shepard. We'll be right back. Dale, first of all, congratulations on an outstanding. You were bill peddling all day long trying to catch these guys. Well, I... Uh, Thanks for a good race. And, you know, the good wrench uh, crew did a good job. Uh, old car just ran good. We stayed out of trouble. We dodged a couple of wrecks, and, uh, you know, the guys did a good job, and that's all I can say. Thank you. And, and Teresa getting in here, getting a big hug and kiss. Uh, I'm sure you probably didn't want to see that last uh, that last caution play. Well, I had a little bit of a lead there, but still, we, we felt like we could run him. Felt like we'd be okay. Now that big wreck up in turn three and four. Now Childers told me, he said, well, we know the brakes work now. Well, we didn't use the brakes. We just drove through. We didn't stop. We figured we had to get out of Dodge while we can. The car apparently, from what we were told during the day, was loose throughout the afternoon. And Childers said no matter what you did to it, they couldn't get the car. There's, there's Taylor and Nicole, the little one, getting a big kiss from Dad. The car, uh, they couldn't get the car tight enough for you, apparently. Well, we made several adjustments. Went one way, then went the other, and... Uh, I think the last one was pretty pretty good for the run, you know. I'm glad we didn't have a long run there at the end, though. It looks like you're, even though you're tired, you're looking a little better than the last time I saw you, but you landed Atlanta. I definitely feel better. I'm tired, but I feel better. Dale Earnhardt picking up his win here in the Trans South 500, his sixth win at Darlington here at the track too tough to tame. Let's check in with Dick Bergeron. Well, I'm up, I'm up hit road with Morgan Shepard. Radio's talking to him, so we'll just dive in here and listen to what he's saying. Uh, we uh, uh, kind of messed up going down in turn one. My windshield had got covered uh, with grease pretty good, and uh, I really couldn't see that good other than uh, just uh, see an Earnhardt car. And I just got too close and uh, flipped up against the wall, and when it did that, uh, my car wouldn't turn no more. It just uh, kept pushing. Couldn't run it any harder, could you, Morgan? No. Uh, you know, we didn't need the cautions, uh, but our days are coming. Uh, this team's showing a lot of strength. Sure is. He's obviously disappointed. Shouldn't be. He had a great run here this afternoon. His wife Sonia with him. He is a tired fella as well he ought to be. Yeah, he finished in fifth position, but that was certainly not indicative of the way that he ran most of the afternoon right there in second place, really, most of the day. When he talks about the car would not turn, I'm sure that he knocked a toe in out. The car was towed out, which makes the car, when you go in the corner, just not able to turn the car at all guy that finished fourth and uh, started from the pole position, Jeff Bodine, Jerry Punch, is with him. Well, Jeffrey, just walking back in here, you look to be pretty well tired, but uh, you had a pretty good run today in the Budweiser Ford. No, I'm not tired. That car drove so good. You know, we had a stretch after that accident off turn four that had to fight it for a long while. We, we got loose. They bumped me from behind, and it messed the car up back there. The crew did a great job. They, they had an oil leak, had sheet metal damage. They fixed it all. But we didn't catch up with the chassis, Jeff, until right there at the end. Uh, you know, they, they moved me up front, the crew did, on a pit stop. They just kept gaining, we kept gaining, and there we sat uh, second on with a couple uh, cautions to go, and 
The car was just too loose to run with Dale. He was running really good. Mark got by me. We knew we couldn't win the race with what we had, so we pitted, and uh, unfortunately it took longer to clean the wreck up than we thought, and uh, we just didn't have enough time to get back to the front. But I'm really proud of the team, and uh, everyone did a great job. And, and all you Ford fans, all you Jeff Bodine Jr. Johnson fans, this is just a little bit of what's to come the rest of this year. We're going to be strong all year. Hi, Kathy, Matt Berry. Love you. I guarantee you they're going to be strong. Let's go up to Dick Bergen right quick. Here's another guy that's going to be strong all year for sure, Mark Martin, finishing second. Good run. Great run. You know, uh, we're tickled to death to run second. We got behind, and uh, the crew, you know, Jack Roush and Steve Neal and all the guys, got me back up front, and then darn if I wasn't caught up in that accident. Got behind again, and, and uh, you know, we finally got back up front, but it was too late then, and, you know, we just wound up short. Well, count on these guys doing well for the remainder of the season for sure. Mark Martin finishes in second position here this afternoon. Now, the Winston Cup point standing. Earnhardt maintains the lead. Morgan Shepard still in second. Jeff Bodine moves to third. Kyle Petty is fourth in points. And Bill Elliott moves into fifth position in the point standing. The top 20 finishers, Earnhardt, Mark Martin, Davey Allison, Jeff Bodine, and Morgan Shepard. In sixth was Harry Gant, then Bill Elliott, Brett Bodine, Michael Waltrip, and Ken Schrader. Finishing 11 through 15, Daryl Waltrip, Bobby Hillen, Kyle Petty, Richard Petty, and Terry Labonte. And finally, 16 through 20, Dave Marcus, Butch Miller, Rusty Wallace, Chad Little, and Jack Pennington. Those are the unofficial results of the Trans South 500. Next, we have golf coming up for you. We'll be with you next Sunday for the Valley Mail Meets 500 at Bristol International Raceway. Don't forget Saturday Night Thunder this coming Saturday in Speed Week at 7.30. We'll see you then. This is Bob Jenkins. So long, everyone.